is evolving your boy is evolving your boy is evolving guys it's your main man here double h trying to live trying to exist trying to stay alive man trying to stay alive in this crazy ass world called planet earth man so guys sorry i should you know us black people man we get a bit of a dry skin and so forth man. so we need, we need we need to be kept well fed so guys look man it's going to be a popped up show because we're going to talk about theft well, we're going to talk about levers and forgery. Hopefully, Ricardo can explain to us what a lever does. Because last I checked, you pull a lever and then an explosion happens. So, because that's what that's what levers do in the films that I used to watch and the cartoons I used to watch. So I don't know what your boy and um, this lever merchant is doing. We're going to talk about Jules. Well, we're going to talk Jules Kunde because at Chelsea getting him, at Chelsea not not getting him. What is the status of that signing? Because at one point it seems to be. Going towards Chelsea, but another point pass are coming in. So we're going to go into those details, and hopefully Eric will be here because Eric promised me Kunde. He promised me Kunde because I don't know what kind of world we live in if Barca steal all three of Chelsea's targets. That would just be a bit wild. We're also going to talk about your boy Darwin. After the insults and the abuse, he's, he he put up four Gs, four Gs, the four piece, the hammer of thought. He put down the hammer of four on their haters who said he was de-evolving. So we're going to talk about it like, is has Nunes finally shown that he can be that dude and he can maybe make an impact on the EPL? We're also going to um, talk as well about Memphis Depay. Um, rumors are Drake may be heading over to um, Man United. Uh, sorry, that could be a deal that could be happening because it just seems as if there's going to be no space for Depay if you're, the ski is there, Obama is there, and, and so forth. So is it Depay United? Is that a good deal? Is that a viable deal? Um, we're also going to touch upon Charlotte. Yes, Charlotte. Chelsea listen to, to Charlotte. How worried should we be about that? Frank de Jong saying that he wants to stay at Atabasa, even though I was told otherwise. And then we'll look at the Saudi Mane winning the African Player of the Year awards and whether he deserved it over your boy Salah. So again, guys, um, feel free to drop in, like the vid, subscribe if you're new, and if there's anything you want to add into this beautiful chat, use the super chat function, man. Use that super chat function, man. Th those dubs help us grow and help me to do this as a 24 7 job so i want to give a shout out to the crew that i have here with me i got your boy mike got your boy ricardo i got your boy rick b and your boy vitor is back in that piece man trying to explain to us why Haaland is dodging the smoke why is Haaland dodging yes why is he dodging the smoke yes Nunes is trying to say what's up Nunes is asking him to come outside um so look, man, there's only one place to start with all this, man. There's only one place to start with all this, man. Um, I'm going to keep it real simple here, Eric. And I just want a straight answer. I don't want left, right, me, but I just want a straight answer. Eric, is the jewel coming to the bridge? I, am I going to see a French jewel perched upon the most famous bridge in world football? Um, I don't think the crown jewels are from France, but I, th I think we're going to see the crown jewels soon. I just said jewel, the French jewel, the the, the French jewel, the, the the crown jewels. His name is Jules. Jules, okay, Jules, Jules, Jules. Less, less, less. Look, I I I said I I think I, I remember saying something a few um not too long ago, a few weeks ago, and people were coming after me, you know, making fun of me. Who are your sources? People calling me Eric Zone in the comments. What 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 are you guys saying now? So you're saying it's a done deal. It's, it's done. I mean, if 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 you just glance at Twitter, everybody who is, you know, everybody's saying it's done. So it's, I mean, even your boy Terry, I, I saw his tweets. It's done. So <laughs> if Terry said it, it's definitely done. So that's it. Oh, wait, wait, hold, oh, well. Well, Terry did say that Frank De Jong wanted to go to Man United, and we're going to talk upon that afterwards. So I don't. No, no. Terry is normally bloody good. He's normally very, very good with his sources. But when when he no, he, you can't you can't judge him too much with the United because he's a United fan. So that's it. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so United fans. Are, okay, so Jules Kunde is going to be a Chelsea player. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty much done. Like it's it's unofficially official, so it's it's done. Happy. 
content, step by step, uh, the direction. What What are your emotions? Because for me, I, I as I said, it's there. I, I was a lot more happy with Kulibali than than than, than Kunde. But look, man, you know, you need reinforcements because obviously, now I want to give you a double barreled answer. I am I am question. Kunde coming in as the request of going out. Good trade. Um, depends who you ask. I think if you ask Tuchel, he'll say no. <laughs> Especially with the way Barca have been uh, moving recently. So, Tuga probably wants to keep Aspi. He rates him higher than most Chelsea fans rate this guy. I think he's the one who was um, he was very involved in the extension. He made sure Aspi played a number of games to get a contract extension. When we were still, um, we had the, um, the, you know, the, the sanctions. So, I think Tuga really values Aspi Lecreta. So, he's gonna, probably going to stay at least one more season. But you know, Kunde no, no, is no, no, okay. no, yeah. no but, but, but I thought this whole Kunde thing was if Kunde comes as Bluequeta will go to Barca. Yes, that that is what will happen. Maybe long term, that's the that's the idea. But for me, I'm not really against the squad depth. Even though you would say that's you know, Aspi is probably not even good enough for squad depth nowadays. He should, he should not be on. He should be on the bench most of the time. He should be like um, Milner for Liverpool. You know, oh. club captain, but. He, you know he's he's on the bench he's not coming he's not playing games he's not coming so you can look at it like that but for me i think because of the season that's coming up it's very different like i've never we've, i've never experienced in my lifetime i've never seen a walk up in december so it's going to be different so for me as much squad depth as possible is 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 good like aspi is good he's good enough to play certain games mm. um, but, 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 so i don't really get a full answer from you kunde Happy, yeah, yeah. Content, um, indifference. What What is the main emotion from you? Look, because, I like because Kunde. my emotion from Kukunde yeah. is to, if this has what you want to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I wasn't looking at him. I have to be honest. I wasn't looking at him at first, but and and the height thing is a big deal for me. But people people kept telling me, you know what, he can he can jump very high. He's a very good, you know, no, no, aerially. Eric. So is how 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 tall was Cannavaro? And that guy was one of the best defenders in the world. True, time, so. but but Cannavaro never played uh, in the Premier League. Can you tell me, you know, how many top English defenders who were short played in the Premier League? How tall was Vidic, you know, really? Was no, Vidic was like 5'11", five, five maybe 6. I think Vidic was... No, Vidic was like 6'2", six 6'3". Six was sure? I'm, I'm pretty sure Vidic was like at least 6 foot. I think that's but, like 5'11". But, like but, but my thing about this is that... From your heights, that's all that matters is is your jumping good, because a yeah, short okay. guy can have a great spring to his his jump. So all that matters is that how high can you jump? That's the main no. thing. So for me, it's not about the height; it's about your, your about the jump. Yeah, look, that's that's a, that's a, that's part of it. How how can you jump? Um, remind me or something? No, um, look. Oh. <laughs> yeah, look. Um, I think uh, he has to get his timing right. Like, there's a lot of things that he needs to get right, and he's young, so he's gonna make mistakes. We, we've seen what he's done to you know certain games. So, he's he's a good sign. Uh, it's better than Ake, hundred percent. It's better than um. Oh, no, no, better... no, no, look, look, footballing wise, the guy is, the guy can play well with the ball. So, given the yeah. ball, bring the ball out. He's perfect for that. So he's, he's perfect. He's very in that good. Sense. He's very good. I'm just and and I hear, for... yeah. sorry, yeah, I hear that he he's very good in the back three as well. He can yeah. he can play that very well. So, for me, it's a it's a very good signing. Squad signing, I think maybe he can be a starter in the future. Who knows? But for me, it's it's more exciting than even though like the, the main thing was um he's already gone right. The main the main signing was uh, Kulibali, but mm -hmm. this is a nice squad option, a very solid squad oh, option. Okay, so if it's a back three, so Kulibali, Sil, and I mean, from what I'm hearing, Silva will play in a back three. Because Tuchel doesn't think he can play in the back four. Okay, so, I mean, so, he, he's so kind of old, Bale right? So who's the, who's the third guy then? He's gonna be, he's gonna be Kunde. Maybe maybe Aspi. Um, no, Kunde on the Kunde on the right. Um, so, so you know, so, 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 so Kunde is, on the is, left. Is, 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 so he, he's the starter. I mean, the way the team is now, yes. But if if we get one more centre back, maybe not. You know, in the back four, will it be a starter? I don't know. It's, I'm I'm very curious. We'll see what Eric, happens. Eric, 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 I want to ask Eric. We have to go back to a back. Because, Eric, we're going to we're gonna talk about Charlotte. We're going to talk about Charlotte's flair. We're going to talk about Charlotte's FC. We're going to talk about Charlotte's okay. flair. Okay, we're going to talk about Charlotte's flair. Okay, we're going to talk, talk about okay. December 2019, when these guys were founded and, and so forth. We're going to talk about that. Um, Cardo, 
What's up, man? Could, you, you lost out. You lost out. You, you, you loser. How does it feel to be on the, the losing side finally? Huh? How does it feel? You thought uh, you could you could scope up the I'm deal. pretty sure if you look at Unlock him, mate. Unlock him, mate. Unlock him. I'm pretty as, sure as we're if you look at our, our DMs, I'm pretty sure if you look at our DMs, I have told you that I generally don't really care about this player. Rather, I'd actually like to troll you. Kunde is a good player. Don't get me wrong. He's a good player for La Liga. Realistically, for Barcelona, it doesn't make any sense because he's a right-sided center back. Oh, sure. Yeah. And Araujo is a right center, uh, right kind of sided take center the back. L, take the L. No, but I'm, 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 I'm telling you the truth. We don't have a left-footed center back. So I mean, getting two right-footed center backs generally makes no sense, especially for the price that you're getting him. Who's going to play the left? Who the hell knows? Um, Kunde is a good player, but it's like for that price – like I said, I'll take him because he's proven in La Liga. That's why I would take him. Do I think he is next up? Like, well, straight up, he we're not going to compete with Chelsea's personal offer, which he's getting offered nearly twice as much as he's getting offered at Barcelona. So, I mean, at least that's what is reported. So, if he wants to go to Chelsea and make more money, then cool, okay, good luck trying to win anything because realistically Ooh, you're not gonna win much Ooh, eric you heard that eric you heard that salts i mean i don't know ricardo not... <laughs> take the l we got kunde you said he and, was overrated no, no, and and didn't... ricardo <laughs> please let us meet in the ucl ricardo i'm begging you sure i'm sure. begging I, you I, I don't mind i'm begging you because, because eric man eric do, all you're eric, do you know the kind of when beats you lose, we'll you're give just guys... gonna accuse us of cheating like every time you, you, you guys don't want you don't want us in the ucl eric, Why would eric, I don't because you don't because that because uh, am I supposed to be scared of Timo Werner, what? Kai Havertz, Sterling? Sort of flex, Eric. <laughs> imagine if no, 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 do you know what would be perfect? <laughs> Real Mike Vaso Streets, we meet Barca, yeah, Lewandowski, Kessie, all those guys, so forth, and we beat the living crap out of them because at the end of the day, you can flex with all the players you want. Tuchel is in one dugout. our trade is, is in the other freaking dugout. You literally said last week that Kunde was overrated. That's literally what you said last week. Ricardo, are you done so I can move to the mic? <laughs> no, uh, um, <laughs> no, but it's like uh, what Eric said about a squad player. Bro, if you're getting Kunde, he's not a squad player. He's going to play. Oh, oh no, like, no. He's, he's like, I don't know not, what Eric was smoking. You're starter. not paying a player 10 to Look, 12 million a okay. year just to him be off the bench. He, he's going right. to start. That's the reality. Let, let's see. Let's see. For me, I don't know if he's good enough to be a starter. We'll, but we'll see. Eric, no, no, but, but Eric, but look at that. No, but look at if if he doesn't man. start, who else? Who else starts on this team? Chaloba. <laughs> Malansar. Wow. No, no, no Malansar needs to. He, he needs to go on loan, man. Well, then who else? You guys have nobody else at center back. Uh, I mean, we can play. We, 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 we can play. We can play Aspi. We can just go back to. But what Eric, was the whole last point season. is that Aspi is a. This whole thing of Kunde yeah, he's coming not good. in. No, no, he's not good enough. So you think no. Aspi is, is, not, is not going? And that's no, not he's, he's staying. I, I think Aspi is staying. But that's my personal opinion. I'm not seeing any sources. Like, I didn't read anything. Rick, Ricardo, what are I your Bomas Catalonian sources saying about Aspi Quetta? To uh, I think, it, from what I've read, it's, it completely just depends on if Chelsea want to let him go. And if to, if Kunde goes to uh, Chelsea, they'll try to push for Aspilicueta, but Tuchel literally just kind of came out and said that he doesn't want to let Aspilicueta go. So, I mean, okay, that's beyond okay. Barcelona. No, but but with, regardless of that, based on how much Chelsea are paying for Kundi, you don't, you don't pay that amount of money for a guy to be on the bench. No, exactly. I, I actually prefer this other player who plays for Leipzig, who I believe it was linked to Chelsea. Um, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but it starts with a G. It's, it kind of looks like yeah, that guy. Mm. He, yeah. Uh, very good left-footed center back. I kind of prefer that guy. He's been on the radar for like the last year or two, and I think he's really good. Hopefully, if we miss out on Kunde, then we can go after him. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be competition for him. How do you say his name? Givardio. I think that's how you pronounce it. Bro, Givardio. I'm just going to call. I'm just going to call Guardiola. It just it looks so. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so, 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 Mike, look, don't do that. Man, don't we, do that. We, 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 we got sign him, man. Mike Todd, Todd is is cooking, oh, cooking. man. Your boy. He wait, what's it called? Your boy, Tommy! your boy. He's cooking. He's cooking, man. He's, He's cooking. Co uh, he is definitely breaking the mold of American owners in football, honestly. What? It just makes me more aggravated at my owners, FSG, who don't want to spend the money and are more of just revenue FC, but that's the story for another day. <laughs> Look, you get rid of Christensen and you get rid of Rudiger and you get Kunde and Kulabali to replace. 
Uh, that's good business from Chelsea. But once again, I'm just going to ask, are you just going to win one games 1-0, one 2-0? You're just going to play boring football five in the back? It just seems like it. Who's Mike, you're not going to play four in the back, HH. Mike, Mike relax. Just you Mike, drew with you. You lost to Charlotte Mike, FC. Just relax. I can't wait Mike, for that topic. Mike, <laughs> I can. I, I, I can wait. So I, I, I can wait my, for my whole life for that whole thing. So no, but HH with this signing, okay. I don't know what Eric is thinking. He is going to start. You don't pay ten million a year for salary for him to sit on the bench. He is starting. You have Kunde, Thiago Silva, Kulabali. That's going to be your back five. And I don't. Where's the goals going to come from? So clearly now you need a striker. Or some creative player up front to get the goals. From because Sterling, otherwise, from it's Sterling, Sterling from I guess. Sterling. Otherwise, it's, it's interesting. Ricardo, 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 shut up. <laughs> okay, you, you see what you said there, Michael. Michael, it's very interesting you said that because um, Thiago Silva, for me, he can't start week in week out. So I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, he's so not going to. He can't. On Chalaba or Malang Sar then. Chalaba. Uh, is oh yeah, that Chalaba has made a few mistakes or anything, but yeah. bro, give me Chalaba over Sal all day, every day. Oh, all yeah. day, every day. Oh yeah, yeah. Sal has to go. Sal is leaving. He's gone. Yeah, yeah. So I think overall this is great signing from Chelsea. I think I don't I don't really highly rate him as you know a top center back, but he's good and I think he will work for you guys, especially and I just him on the ball, that's really good. Just let Thiago Silva be the quarterback sort of in the defense. Yes. Let Kulabali and Kunde deal with the rest, basically. No, no, I don't say no bro. Back three of of um Lubali, your boy Sil, Jules, Reese James, right wing back over there. Ooh, chill is, well. Yeah. That's that's it. That's a nice link there. That's a nice French link. That's you notice. Bro, bro. The link. The so oh, look, man. We, we, and we, I just want to know chill. who's going to score the goal. Still, that's all I want to know. Mike. Chelsea. Is it? Is it my sauce? Ricardo, shut up. <laughs> my sources are telling me. My sources are telling me that Chelsea are about to make a big signing. Chelsea are about to make a big signing. Who? Uh, are you guys going to try? Are you guys? Are you guys going to try to break no, your own? No, Vito, right sorry, Vito has a mic. Vito has a mic. Vito has a mic, oh. please. Vito, has a mic. <laughs> Vito, talk to me. The jewel. We beat out Barca, and a jewel chose Barca. So sorry, Jules chose Chelsea over Barca, man. Yeah, that's big. That's big. I, um, surprised by the news because. You got. You guys haven't had some wins as of late. So yeah, well, they're three and one. They're three and one. They're three and one. It's, it's it's good. It's good. Now I, I don't quite agree with Ricardo about you guys having to spend more. That's why he's going there. But his what you guys? Con- his personal terms are a lot higher at Chelsea than it is at Barcelona. So it's not right. Wait, so mm. not, just 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 mm. know whatever that was <laughs> coming from the top right hand of the screen, please. But I think you guys did good business. I think you guys did good business. You definitely needed a player of his profile back there. And I'm not caught up too much with who's going to score, what's going to happen, because we know Tuchel wants to make sure the defense is secured. He wants to line that up first because everything's going to start from there and then move on. Um, Who's going to be your backups? That's another question. What happens when an injury happens? But... I, I like I like what you're showing so far, man. I mean, I'm not Team Chelsea, but that, that's good. That's good. You guys are happy again. I, the second time I'm on the stream, smiles from the Chelsea fans. I've been happy the whole time. I've been happy the whole time, man. Look, Eric, look. Thing, things are looking at be iffy. No, look. My thing is, look, Eric, we're, we're not done yet. And there's a long way to go because, Eric, we need one. We need, we need one big. Just one big. Signing just look, one can, big can one. I just, I no, what easy, position look, do can you I, need the signing? Can though? I just say, hold on, can I just say one thing? This people are just, um, it's so funny to me. People are so obsessed about um, this this club called Chelsea. Just, just wait and when the season starts, you'll see what happens with the attack. Just wait and see, you know. That's all I'm saying. Just wait. Um, I'm gonna because Eric, we're gonna. <laughs> We would have just like follow that up in the next topic, but let's just first deal with this first because Eric, I'm 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 going to fight you just a little bit in the next topic. Let me just let's be, be friends for now, and then we'll, we'll we'll be enemies in in a few minutes. But I got to challenge it before you do that. Go for it. HH. You said a big signing. Do you have any hints position wise? Nope. I'm not. I'm saying my, my lips are sealed. But I think. But all I know is that my sources tell me that Tottenham is working on a big signing. But so I, I don't want I don't want to show my my cards yet, but the okay, epic okay, is coming. Don't, don't don't show your cards. But between <laughs> you and Eric, what position do you want improved? 
what position on the within the squad? Okay, let me let me let me throw this at you and everything. I mean, I think we can still add to the defense, add to the mid mid midfield. But Vitor, I'm looking for that guy. You don't know, like, Ronaldo? wait, hold up, Ronaldo. People, Ronaldo. wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Eric, <laughs> can, I, can I respond to Vitor? You know, you know how you say like, there's that guy, then there's that guy. I'm not looking for that guy. I'm looking for that guy. So you know what I was saying? I'm looking for that guy again and everything. So that's the kind of thing of you. So it's a signing that's going to make guys be like, you know what? I got you. Like, because things like the abuse that Chelsea have been getting has been crazy. For a team who are three-time UCL winners, it's quite weird how slick people have been talking about Chelsea within social media. So I think that it's a signing that I think, because Todd Bolly, he's, he's been trying to work on something. It's, you. why was he attempting to get a Neymar? Now, I didn't want homeboy, but he was attempting to get a Christian because he wants to get a name. He wants that big announcement signing. And I do believe that when all is said and done, because guys, the transfer window hasn't ended yet. You can't, this isn't Chelsea's team for the season. Judge your window once the window is shut. Not now, once it's shut, because until the last minute, your people can still be walking. You can still be walking. So, Veto, I know you have your Haaland boy and everything, and you're trying to get La Cucaracha, La Cucaracha from Brighton, but some, I mean, Eric, do you feel something is in the air with Todd? Do you feel something is in the that something may be brewing in the in the horizon? Look, um, I told you before that I didn't know much about this guy, but based on what I know, he is a very meticulous. He's he has a lot of um, he cares about the, the the detail. You know, he has a lot of attention to detail. So for me, this is just this is just a start. This is just the beginning. And we will see what, you know, I'm sure obviously Tuchel is, you know, he has his own ideas, what he wants the team to look like. And we're just waiting. To, I, don't, I don't even think Tuchel necessarily wants some kind of star player. I don't know what you, you know, what you, you know, you heard from some, wherever you heard it, but uh, let's just keep watching. I, I'm not really, we'll see what, let's just, let's just keep watching. Let me ask you, are you, are you happy? If the season was to like start next week oh, and yeah, the window yeah. was too short, are you happy with the, with, with the team? Um, I am. At the moment, I'm already looking forward to the new season. Honestly, I'm excited. I'm not even joking. I'm excited. So, not just because of my team, obviously, but you know, the league in general. You know, certain players from other teams. Oh, oh, so oh, making oh, their, oh, making oh, their Eric, sorry. This Premier um, League season might be the most narrative field. Like, I am very excited for the for the next Premier League season. Like, there is there there are too many narratives to talk about, man. All right, let's see what the streets are saying. Shout out to your boy Alps. Um, Cannavaro never played in the Prem. These Prem fans, <sighs> Eric, is the Premier League still this massive asset test of if you haven't made it in the EPL, then you're no, no, no. trash? Can, can I just? I need to very quickly nip this in the bud because people okay. are gonna take what I said the wrong way. My point, the point I was making, is that how many defenders in the English league who are a certain height? have been top, you know, world-class players over the years. That's the point I'm making. I'm not saying that you have to play in the Premier League to be considered a top player. But in terms of in the league, who has done it? Who has actually done it? No, nobody's done it. So that's that's all I was trying to say. No, no, okay. But if Pete Cannavaro was to come in the Premier League, you think he'd flop? I'm not saying he would flop, but he, he, never, he never came and did it, right? So we don't know what would have happened. Kunde might be the first. Who knows? Let's see what happens. No, no, but 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 Eric, but you have to, you have to keep in mind that no, Cannavaro I mean, was. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Cannavaro was in Syria when Syria was seen as the best league defensive. Remember, he yeah. was he was in old school Syria. So he, remember, yeah. he came through Parma in the late '90s. So he was when he was at the time when like no, you go to Italy to, to learn how to do to defend Maldini, mm. Costa Cotto, all those dudes. So if he could cut it in Syria, he couldn't cut it in the Premier League. Look. I'm not saying he couldn't cut it, but I, I think of the English league and there's a lot of long ball, right? There's a lot of headers that have to be done in the league. And I'm just saying your timing has to be right. If you're not a certain build, a certain height, you have to get your head in spot. You have to jump at the right time. Make sure your heading is on point. So that's all I'm saying. Like if you're not a taller defender, it's going to be more difficult. Okay. Okay. I mean, I mean, I, 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 I humbly disagree because I believe it's just about jumping. But for us, not fair enough. Alps again says, games are won in midfield. Hh, we will smoke you, man. Alps, 
I am praying for Chelsea to meet Barcelona. I am praying for Chelsea to meet Barcelona. And hopefully when we, we do, and Javi gets Pim smacked, Lara Croft and, and devalued, and Tom Cruised, then you will realize that why this guy was a punk because we all Alps, what happened when when you played against a bunch of Frankfurters? What happened? There we go. Thank you, bro. Daddy Us. Bayern thought eight to zero seven will make them a big club. Daddy Us, are you still on this? Bayern are a big club. Stop hating, bro. Us again. Kunde is a Langley Bakyoko signing. Trust me. No, he's not. No, he's not. Don't. I mean, Longley and Baku, those guys are straight trash. And Longley is an insult to defending. Talent FC, thank you for the dub. Charlotte, all right, you know, all right. Um, what, you know, what, we'll, we'll get to the topic, man. He says, Charlotte's players are Hollywood rejects. Thank you for that, bro. Thank you, bro. Adams, thank you for the dub, Adams. What are we doing here? Let's keep it real, man. Kunde is very, very suspect. But he has the fundamentals, though. But he's still a baby in this thing. Um, all I'm going to say with Kunde is is not a signing that excites me because I look at defending first. Rather than what you can do on the ball, I look at defending first. And I have questions of his... Um, he's overrated, though, right? I have questions about how good he but is as a defender. But he's overrated, right? I have questions as what he can do as a defender. So all I'm going to say is, let us just wait and see. Let's wait and see, and let's wait for the cream to rise. But from what, because when I look at Sevilla and so forth, Sevilla is not a defensive team. They're a very at attacking team. So when he's now forced to be defensive, because Eric, please, we have to go to a back four. Eric, I need us to, to bring sexy back. Look, I need it. us to bring tell, sexy back. Tell your Eric, boy Eric we can't me. play back no, three. No, hold on. Tell, you need to tell your boy, Todd B, to get the players. We need the players. We can't play back for now. With the players right, I'll, call him. I'll call him. I'll call him. I'll, I'll call him tomorrow. Um, Daddy Us, Ban has two CLs in 30 years plus generic league titles. <laughs> this dude, man. Daddy Us, I read the notif as. Ha okay. All right. You know, thank, thank you for finding Daddy Us, man. Um, meet. Leavers man, one million free meals plus Vegas. Guys, do you think that Us is a human being, or do you th do you think he's actually from Earth, or do you think he's maybe like? I think he's an Autobot. <laughs> <laughs> Autobots, <laughs> let's roll out. <laughs> that Us is for the violence, man. He's for yeah, the violence. Man. Shout out to Star Scream, man. Shout out to Star Scream, man. He's um, MVP though. He's the MVP. Half of football scouts impressed by MLS took. Inquired about he going on. No, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Get the hell out of here. You no. need a striker, though. You need a striker. No, not that striker. <laughs> Mr. Uye, thank you for the dub. Mr. Dr. Uye, thank you for the dub, man. Thank you for the dub, Dr. Uye. Thank you for the dub. I think All you right. forgot to send his message. Um, I, let's... I think... <laughs> what? Sorry. I think the thing with Kunde too, is it's not so much that he's proven to work for you guys, but the profile of player is why you guys should be excited. But my main thing is that can he do defend though? It's like you you can be good on the ball and everything. De Ligt is great on the ball, but I need you to be a good defender and understand those defensive fundamentals. So my worry and my question for Kunde is: I know the guy can play well on the ball, and I know the guy can bring the ball up and do all that ball playing stuff. But I need you to be a good defender. Mm, and that's, and that's, that's where we thinking. judge Tuchel. That's where we're going to really judge Tuchel. Yes, sir. Okay, um, Eric, let's fight. Eric, let's fight. Um, now, Eric, I am shout to time zones because when the earth was made, you know, for some strange reason, we can't be in the same time zone. So where I am, which I don't want to re reveal in case I have a stalker, um, I had to get up very early in the morning to watch this team, this team that I allegedly follow. Um, they were playing against Charlotte FC. Eric, do, do you know when Charlotte FC were founded? Um, when, when were when were they founded? December twenty nineteen. <laughs> That's a this good year. First That's a good year. Season. I think this is the first season. Eric, did you hear what I said? Eric, do, I mean, I don't, I don't know whether. Eric, hello, Eric, is this? Hello, one two one two. I can you hear me? They were founded in December twenty nineteen. You, you did you get that? Yeah, I mean, that might explain the, the name of the, the club, but okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, 
I get it's a friendly. I get it's preseason and so forth. And I get that. I think there were like nine or ten changes made from the first half to the second half. It was like a whole completely new team and, and so forth. Um, but a lot of starters were playing in that second half, like Mount and so forth. Um, the football was trash. Now, it's preseason. It's early. It's preseason. But preseason, the results don't really matter. This results does matter, but it doesn't really matter. But what you look at preseason is, okay, you're, it's giving you an idea of what you want to do coming to the new season. For United, the results don't matter. But you now have a general idea of what Ten Hag wants to do. It's just a general thing of, okay, this is what we want to now do. What I'm seeing from Chelsea, because I saw what happened against Club America, where Mount scored late to, to win that game, and I watched the Sun against Charlotte. It don't look good. So I am praying that this is just a general experimentation by Eric, I'm sorry, friendly or not. You can't lose to a team founded in December 2019. You can't do that. So Eric, I mean, what are we saying here about Charlotte Flair? Okay, they're called Charlotte Flair. Okay, I thought it was just Charlotte. No, 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 no. Charlotte Flair is the name of a wrestler, the daughter of Ric Flair. But I just call it Charlotte Flair as a Right. Joke. God, it's fear. I mean, it would have been more Vito, creative. Don't called... Vito, don't see that. Vito, don't see that. Don't see you, Vito. Don't if, don't. If, if that was the actual name, it would have been more creative. I mean, it's just a, a club in Charlotte named Charlotte. I mean, anyway, look, um, I I'm not really bothered about the results. If I'm if I'm being honest, what I'll be upset about is if we lose to Arsenal, the next game. So let's see what happens against Arsenal. And for me, in preseason, even though the results don't matter for me, they do. You know, I, I remember when Chelsea played in Barcelona in preseason. I think it was in Japan, and we won the Rakuten Cup. That that I was happy about. I was very, I was pretty happy about that actually. Um, I think really, is, is yeah, it, yeah. No, no. So see, for no, me, Eric, no, Eric, let's be real. Preseason results don't matter because they don't count towards anything. Why this matters is because Eric. I mean, no friends, my American brothers and everything. I have family who are, I mean, li I literally spent like the whole afternoon with my American family who came over yeah. recently. So I have, I have family who is actually American. So this is no offense, but the MLS, these guys are semi-pros. They're not full, full professionals. Those guys are semi-pros. Yeah, so, but... Friendly yeah, or not, you not... have no business losing to a bunch of semi-pros who were founded in 2019. That is true, that is true but I I'm surprised. Like, I don't know exactly what happened with the game, but the fact that it went to penalties... Um... I didn't think it would go to penalties. So that was interesting to me. So it must have some kind of final, I don't know. Um, which means it's somewhat competitive, which adds to the, you know, the L. But it, I'm, I'm not that bothered because it's not a team that I care about. You know, I, don't, I, I didn't know this team existed a few, a few weeks ago. So it's not, for me, I don't, I don't really care too much. Uh, the performance, okay, people can scrutinize whatever they want, but you said it yourself, it's preseason. If, what, you know, if we lose in the next game and the football is bad as well, then we might have to start, you know, thinking about what we might see in, in this. Because I remember last season, we barely played any preseason games, but the, the first game of the season was very different to what happened in preseason. So I'm not really taking too much notice of, like, look at what Liverpool, Liverpool lost 4-0 to United, you know? It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter, the result. And, and how well did Liverpool play in that game? So I'm not really, I'm not too bothered, honestly. I'm not bothered with the, the football, with the, the performances. Um, but in terms of the next game, I want to beat Arsenal. I don't care if it's preseason. Mike, Charlotte, big deal or let's not look I, too, too well, into it, man. Well, shout out to Minnesota United defeating Frank Lampard's best 11-4-0. <laughs> It was but their Mike, best 11 it's for Frank Lampard. It's, it's Frank oh, Lampard. It's, I expect? mean, they're, they're in trouble. They're in big trouble if they're going to go with that team. Did you see Deli Ali's miss, by the way? Oh, my oh. God. Oh, boy. But look, it, this result doesn't matter. But the performance, that's a little bit worrying. Because once again, I'm going to say this about Chelsea. You play five in the back and you don't create enough. You just don't. And that's going to be your problem all season if this continues. Look, it could definitely change by the time the Premier League season starts. It's all about fitness. It doesn't really matter. Like, I don't care if Liverpool won 5-0 against Leipzig. It's just about fitness and getting Darwin Nunes' his first goal. But, I mean, you lost to Charlotte their first full season. You lost to Christian Fuchs. Remember the guy from Le Leicester? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> he he's he's a good player. He's a good. Yeah, 36 <laughs> years old. Premier League winner. 36. He's, their, he's, he's, he's like 36. their designated player. Like, I guess in the MLS, designated players like the foreign players that you can sign and he's he was the first one so shout out to christian folks but i mean the i mean connor gallagher's penalty 
what? <laughs> I know it's preseason, but that penalty was... He was trying to do a panenka and then realized, yes. oh, I can't do the panenka, and then I'll just no. chip it and see what happens. But I don't I don't think you should be worried about the result, but maybe just the performance has to be oh, better. No, no, no. See, see, Mike, see, for me, it's not... I could, the thing with the results is it's about the embarrassment of it, of mm. how the hell do you lose two guys who are found in 2019. That's just the whole thing. It's not about how this will affect the season. It's, it's just that yeah. this is embarrassing. But it's the performance because, see, I watched see I watched the first half and then shout outs to my stream, you know, what's it called? Government tax or whatsoever. So I saw the first half and I was like, this is like, Eric, this guy, this was bad. This was bad. And I think even if it's low fitness and everything, as Mike just said, there is still a creativity problem. There's still a chemistry problem. And you're looking at a guy like Ziyech, who this guy wants to, to leave. He, he's looking as if he, he's, he's half here, half get, and he doesn't really, doesn't really know. So there's no point in having a Sterling in there mm. if he doesn't have someone to play off of. And that's why I would not come into Vito right now. Because Vito, people have been telling me that Sterling only works with a striker. So if Chelsea go into the season, and it's either Havertz or Werner or so forth. Can Sterling still be effective? Or do we have to actually have to go out and get a striker in order for him to, 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 to use him well? See, it's not that Sterling only works with a striker. But to maximize what you get from Sterling, you need a striker. So last season, down down year, we would all agree. Everyone, even City fans, would, would criticize and say Sterling had an off year. Man still gave us, I think, fourteen and seven, right? He he still he still delivered. I know you're going to need more than that type of production um, on your end, but he's still an effective player. Now, you guys reminded me this transfer window doesn't end until September one. There's lots of time, so things may change. But what I saw, and again, I, I wasn't going to wait up to watch that, but what I saw highlights in, in some of the clips. Tuchel is just putting, he's, he's, it's like Mr. Potato Head. He's just putting different combinations out there and seeing what, what happens here. He didn't put together the best 11 that he wanted to see. I think he kind of put players based off of how, how the dynamics would work amongst them. So I wouldn't put too much, too much into that friendly game. Um, the fact that it went to penalties, the fact that, that Paneka didn't work out, like, those are the great. Those are the perfect excuse to be like, "Hey, it's a, it's a friendly. Who cares? Look at what happened." Um, judging the, judging the play, judge the play because Tuchel had a Mister Potato Head moment. Eh, let me put the nose on the arm. Let me put. He's just putting pieces everywhere. So let's see this game because I agree with Eric. You, Tuchel, better put the best eleven that he would like against Arsenal. Even though it's a friendly, he better do that because you need to get a good sense of what your squad is. You, you only have two remaining preseason games, if I'm correct. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, not. I see. Yeah, look, I think the results don't matter, but Aston is, is Arsenal. And I think more so than the results is okay, I need to give, I, I need an idea of what will the football be like moving forward. So whether you win, lose, or draw is. Okay, what are you trying to do? Exactly, because, but yeah, but Tuchel didn't give you guys that that past, this past game. He didn't give you uh, what is the football going to look like. He didn't give you how are these players going to attack. It, it, in my opinion, you guys know Chelsea way better than mm -hmm. I do. But I was looking at the combinations in terms of players. I'm like, is is this really a combo? Uh, maybe defensively, you had Silva and you had James, right? So I, I kind of get that. But when James actually play more of the the wing back than right center back in that back three. So I don't know. I, I I feel he was just trying to see player fitness, not really see how players were gonna perform. No, no, I mean, no, I, 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 think, I mean, how many? Yeah. I mean, I, I just need to respond to what you. Mm. How how often do you see a grand? You know, this is the manager's plan for the season based on a few preseason games. How many times do you actually see that? Because for me, I'm not sure that's actually a thing. That's just my. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. What, what, so, no, no, what, no, 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 but see, here's where it's different. That's where, for, for, for Tuchel, no, the rules are different to you. The football was so garbage last season and was so void of any character or any kind of direction. I need to see, okay, 
what are you trying to do? Because you can't, you can't go back to that crap of last season. Because last season, it literally was just vibes. So, I, I took a little note, it's on the hot seat. I, because you can't just be like, let's just wing it and just see what happens and get results. Because, bro, like, <laughs> like because, <laughs> Eric, I think Tottenham are going to do really well next season. I think these guys are going to do really well this season. And, Eric, I'm going to tell this right now. This is, let, Eric, I'm going to talk to you before I go to Ricardo. Eric, I'm going to tell you this right now. Tottenham had have a, have a, a good transfer. He's got all, all his signings. Eric, what if Martial... Solid just pops off on the tent and hand. He won't, he won't. Eric, no, 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 no. I'm just honest to you. What if you say he won't? What if Marshall pops off? They what need if to finish Jesus ahead of starts, is, is this that crazy goal scrimmage? United Eric, and Arsenal are Eric, my the fear is this, Eric. My fear is this. My fear now, I believe that United won't stiff up for the struggle, same with the Arsenal. But I'm Eric, I'm covering all bases. What if Marshall is amazing? What if Jesus, this guy's just scoring lots of goals? Mm. And what if Chelsea go into next season and don't get a striker? I mean that's a good thing technically, right? Based on what we've seen recently, maybe we don't need maybe we don't need a striker, you know. And and you don't you don't have the look. Hitch, for me, I'm not. Spurs are good, hundred percent. I'm not looking forward to that game, um, against Spurs. Um, I think we're playing them a few games games into the season, mm. so I'm not looking forward to that at all. And I think they'll finish ahead of us at this. At the way things stand right now, I, think I have Tottenham there. in second, bro. Mike, no offense, I have second. Tottenham coming second. Yes. Above who? Liverpool? Yeah. Not happening, man. Um, um, we'll see, though. So, so before we record, guys, please, please hit that like button, guys. Please, please, let's get to 300 likes, guys. Let's get to 300 likes. Hit that like button. Hit that like button, guys. Ricardo, man, Charlotte. I mean, I think the result speaks for itself. Like you actually lost to an MLS club that existed only. It was born around the same time as a pandemic, has it not? So it's as old as the virus, is what was what we're being told. <laughs> 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 Look, I didn't watch the game, but it was so bad that I saw Conor Gallagher's penalty go viral on the internet. I'm pretty sure that's everybody saw. <laughs> What was he trying to do a panenka or did he just try to pass he it? He was trying to do a panenka. I was trying to do a panenka. Because first of all, that run up to the ball was dodgy. It looked like a little <laughs> kid taking his first penalty ever. But like this is the guy that I'm that Chelsea fans gassed up. Ricardo, with. not me. Ricardo, please don't pull. Well, me not you, screen. not you. I, I will. I, I will just okay, say yeah, Chelsea fans. You. Apart from the go to HH, and then I mean I won't put the last bit. But Chelsea fans have. <laughs> Gas this guy up because he's like what a one season wonder at Crystal Palace. Oh, was that Crystal Palace? Yeah, it was Crystal he's Palace. A, he's right? a he's a piss and power merchants man. <laughs> he's he's a good player. He's good. He's good. Wait, he's a, he's a he's a squad player. Good. He's not a starter. Oh no, squad. But he, he, Eric, that that's that dude is not a starter. So this is what I'm supposed to say. So HH, say let's say it's the Champions League night in, in March, right? And Chelsea pull up to the Camp Nou. A midfield of a washed up Conte, Mason Mount, and Conor Gallagher is what I'm supposed to be scared of. And maybe Jorginho. Don't don't so let Pierre be the manager to get the best out of him and not Tuchel. I mean, is that one? I, I I guarantee they're not even touching the ball with like with Pedri, Dijon, Cassie. Like <laughs> they can press all they want. They ain't touching the damn ball. That's for sure. Like, I mean, it's it's easy to say that now. We don't. I haven't forgotten what happened last year. We played Madrid, so you can say whatever you want. No, no, but 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 you can't you can't judge us before the transfer window has ended, man. You like? <laughs> have so you Ricardo, done, what have you guys done so no, far? No, 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 Ricardo, you're laughing now. You guys got a no, washed no, up center back. Ricardo, you're laughing Ooh, now. But Ricardo, you're you laughing now. But Sterling. that's not the, the, the team that's going to be the match. PTSD that's not the team that's going to be match. Also, also, Ricardo, you can't really be, be talking when you lost to, to to Frankfurt. So I don't know what we're on about. <laughs> you lost to Charlotte. You lost to Charlotte in a preseason game. Charlotte, as old as coronavirus, you lost to Charlotte. Like H H, you you guys can't you can't hold on to this transfer window doesn't close for a while bit as well because the season. Vater, what else? Okay, 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 Vater, what else do I have? No, I know, but the no, season. No, 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 no,
violence HH. If the trans window was closed and we still have the same team, I won't be as I you see. You'll see who it is, but I won't be as calm as this dude. I don't know whether this this dude is on drugs because this guy seems calm when Relax. I think I should be worried. Look, what I'm look. saying is that basically, if this this he's got a good scene, woman in his wife in his life, he looks like he's got a good woman in his you life. Know, we all need that night. Well, you know. Uh, okay, well, let me not go like <laughs> let me not go there. So. Sh- my thing is no, it's my thing is that if this is near the end of the transfer window and it's still the same team, of course I'll, I'll be panicking. So I am a glass vessel. What's my name? Have hope. No, I, I got Have you. Hope. I got you. But the transfer window and September one, you're mm-hmm. playing Tottenham August fourteenth. You're playing Everton the week before that. Like Vaisal, can you can you ask? I have a question for you, Vaisal. Um What is Chelsea's um, target this upcoming season? What, what should we be trying to do? What board? should what should Chelsea be trying to do based yeah. off of the standings? Yeah. Okay. Or maybe just based off the way last season ended. Well, the based off last season ended, you you correct me if wrong. You guys finished third. Yeah. Right. I know that you had a lot of turmoil. You had a lot of things going on, but you don't want to. You don't want to risk. You don't want to go backwards. So. As it looks right now, you don't look to be in a position to hold third, as as I see it. So, I would have, I would have actually, I've been, I've been criticized of this. I've actually looked at the standings and be like, we might get the same standings with maybe a flop, a switch between fifth and sixth. I think that might be the only change we see. I think the standings might remain the same this year. So, 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 so I, no, no. Are you saying, what, okay, is Chelsea's aim to win the league? next season no 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 I, I would never i would never say to chelsea fans you guys should be expecting to win the league no 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 it's by simple it's... no you guys you should not have been the don't even try no i would i would say don't even try to win the league <laughs> so what's the objective I, for next year that's what i'm trying to figure out i i would say i, I would say definitely tushel has shown that he can go far into cup runs I would say that that needs to be a, a priority because so you can So what are they winning what are they winning is what i'm asking you, you, you can't go again into the finals and not win you guys pick the cup you want you guys pick it i won't pick, it. <laughs> I won't pick it. what what trophy i'm asking what trophy is going to be if it's fa cup minimum or karabuki cup i'll accept the answer but i just want you to say it i i, I don't want to say that well you know you don't have to speak no 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 no, no, no veto chelsea don't go into any season with the objective of not trying to win the that league. was under different ownership that was under different ownership <laughs> You have to change. So, okay, so hold on, hold on, no, 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 Let me just, let me just, let me just do it. So, so you're saying that our aim is top four. Your your aim should actually be third. If you drop to fourth, I think that's a bad season. Aren't these Arsenal ambitions? Uh, So I can't do that. No, but that's because that's because you have that's because you have the you you have your old mentality you need you need to think differently you need to think differently i'm not saying long term i'm not saying for the remainder of this ownership but this year in particular too much went down last year if you guys can just hold ship do you, get a, do, do you know what you know what another thing is you're, you're talking out of arrogance i get no, it. no yeah, no no i get it 98 points 100 points um records broken and everything you're talking out of arrogance Vito. I'm, I'm sick and tired of that bold dude winning this damn league. And Vito, I don't care about Chelsea's transfer things or so forth. I will never accept Chelsea aiming for third. Chelsea's aim is to win that league. And for them to win that league, I need to get its players. So we needed the players in order to, to win that league. So, and that should watch Chelsea aim. Because if Vito, this, I get a sense of arrogance in your voice. Because your bass in your voice, it's take that bass out of your voice because it's way too arrogant. <laughs> because that voice tells me that, look, Chelsea, you're small boys. Look, you, you can't mess with us. Eric, are you saying that we can't step up to City if we get all of our targets this summer? Eric, you can't be content with chasing third and fourth. Hold on. Okay. No, look, Hitch, I don't know if anybody is more, um, more of a league merchant than me. In the sense of wanting to win the league, I've I've wanted to since the last time 
I've been counting. I've literally been counting the years. It's we're we're doing a like what's, what's the word? We're, we're we're counting up. The, it's it's crazy. United are counting how many years they've been without a trophy. Chelsea are counting how many years we've been without um the the, the, the league mm-hmm. title. And at this point, it's it's getting it's getting so bad that I can't remember the last time we won. I mean, the last time we won a league and um, sorry a trophy in England was 2018. That's a that's a very long time ago for Chelsea. So, you know, for me, I completely agree with you. I would I would love to win the league this season, upcoming season, of hundred percent. I've wanted to win the league since the last time it happened. But at the same time, do I expect it? No, of course I don't. I don't expect it to happen. You know, but that's all I'm saying. Let's let's we we should try. Of course, let's try to do it. But at the same time, let's not have unrealistic expectations, so that when things don't work out. You then you know say things like uh, you know start start from scratch, you know, yeah, re- replace everybody in the squad, just you know. But but that's what all I'm, the contracts sack the manager, you know. That's exactly what I'm saying though, HH. I'm saying shoot for the stars, right? Shoot for the stars. If you don't quite get there, which is shooting to win the league, but you get third, it's not a it's not a bad thing. Your motivation always should be winning league that don't get me wrong i'm not saying you guys should not have been think of that as an op, as, as a possibility that's your they movement they don't have but, the facilities for that but based off the turmoil based off of the players that you're looking for it it that may not be what you're capable of doing that's all i'm saying look at the last the last season in particular liverpool all of the players that they had in the pursuit of a quad you guys think you can challenge for a team that was pursuing a quad they weren't pursuing a quad. That was a pipe dream, but whatever. Um, shout out to your boy, Elsie. Barca, no, they're not. No, they're Barca is coming in again for Kunde. No, they're not. Casey, take the L. Take the L. You you, you lost. You lost us on this. We have Kunde. You, you don't. You lost. Thank you. Michael Buffer, tell Tuchel to play 4 for 2 or 4 for 3 formation. Once you do that, your team is finished. Five at the back. We never even bid for him and you all chatting, getting happy for nothing. I, I think this is, is this a Barca fan? Now, Mike, remind me again what happened when you played against Frankfurt and what Frankfurt did to you at Camp Nou. Remind me again about the team who made Lionel Messi cry like a little baby in the 2012 UCL semis. Remind me, please. I'll be here. Remind me what happened. Thank you very much. Um, La Cobham Milinkovic. HH is not a hardcore Chelsea fan and doesn't have any tattoos but he loves Zola. Yeah. I don't I don't have any tattoos and so forth. I don't have a tattoo of Zola. I do love Zola. I'm not a hardcore Chelsea fan. I am a realistic Chelsea fan. Stroke a complicated Chelsea fan. Thank you. Alps Charlotte played their f- <laughs> Eric, you see you, you, you see that? They, have, they played the first of the game five months ago. Eric it's Eric it's embarrassing. Eric it's embarrassing. I don't even know if that's true but yeah, maybe it's it true. is not. It is. They found it in twenty nine. No, they, they've only played like what twenty something games. Like these guys are new. These guys are new, bro. Um, Elsie, you need a striker. Kai isn't a number nine. Casey, last I checked, the transfer window doesn't end next week. Give us time, Casey. When the transfer window ends, then judge our window. Okay, relax, man. La Corbe. It's preseason. It's all about getting fitness. Shake my head. I don't give a damn whether it's preseason. You, ha- there is no excuse for losing to an MLS team founded in 2019. I don't give a damn. Thank you, Elsie. Only Chelsea can lose to the most. <laughs> oh, shout out to Charlotte out there, man. Um, there it is. Don't forget. Yeah, don't even have a name. I E D man. Oh, wow, thank, thanks for that, Daddy Usman. Shout out to you, bro. Alps. Tuchel has no identity. He has no style of play. His tactics and formation is always in consideration of the opposition. Tuchel is not that guy. Eric, are you fearful that he doesn't have a strong, precise philosophy or way of playing? Does that bother you at all? Yes, 100%. I'm fearful of a lot of... Look, I am concerned about a lot of things. When, um, under the previous ownership, I was concerned this guy's not going to last more than maybe he might not even last 18 months. I think the average last one is like 18 months. He might not even have lasted that long. Mm. I was concerned about that all the time. Um, and certain decisions he made was 100% because of the pressure, because it's just normal. You have to be like, think about 
I heard there was a stat that um, I know you won't care about. You, know, you won't care about this, but I think it was on the last game or something like that. One of the last games that not a single um, academy player was involved in the, in the game, and that's like a tradition of the of the club to do that. So who knows? Maybe maybe it's because of the pressure. Who knows? Like we, a lot of things happened last season, right? But even now, I mean, people say also. Chelsea fans are the most critical fans of Tuchel. Honestly, they, they criticize Tuchel more than even opposition fans. From what I've heard, but, there's but, some of but, them but, that are very. How were the How were those same clowns about Lampard when he was there? That tyrant. Well, I mean, I'm I'm sure you know there are a lot of Chelsea supporters who don't like who don't like Lampard. I mean, you just need to. I mean, I mean, there's they're they're there they're there, but look, um, I think I'm I'm concerned all the time about this whole thing. You know, Sterling might not work out. You know, Tuchel may get sacked. Who, who, what makes us think Todd Bowley won't be willing to sack Tuchel? You know, he's he's about the numbers. He's he's very um, careful with these things. So, yeah, I'm concerned about a lot of things, but it's just normal. I think it's it's, it's always a risk. There, there's always risks and, and things you worry about. Even people, even even club, um, sorry, Liverpool fans and City fans. I'm hundred percent sure they have problems. And concerns with with Pep and Klopp. It's just it's normal. So mm. it's just how it is. Oh no, for me, I just think that like in you look at Conte, you look at um, Pep, you look at Klopp. You everybody has a very defined way of playing, and I think that's the name of the game into this football. You need a defined way of playing. And my fear of Tuchel is that he's like a chameleon who just chops and changes based on the players that he has and who he goes to up against. And that's all well and good, but you need a balance. I think you need a balance of, which is why Mourinho was so amazing. You do need a general philosophy, but also I need you to be able to have a plan B, a plan C and plan D and not just be married to one philosophy. You need to okay, have a balance. Okay, so, so I, I have to disagree with that particular point. Tuchel does have a style of play. He definitely does. If you look at what he did at PSG, yeah, he does. He has a way of playing. Um, if you look at what he did at PSG with the formation, even at Dortmund, but there's have you seen a way at, he at, at, at Chelsea. Have you seen that at, at Chelsea? Yes, but you know, look at the team he came into. He has to build that team. I mean, Dortmund and 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 PSG are different clubs to Chelsea. Even PSG, to some extent, can sort of you know get targets that you can work with. But Chelsea, not so much. Not so much. We don't really do that. We don't give the managers what they want. We just How give many... them whatever. How many transfer windows does Tuchel need? Because he keeps getting a bly for it's not his team. How many more transfer windows? I mean, okay, let's let's look at since he came in. He came in in January, right? January 2021. He won the league with a team that, for me, should never have won the league, right? Champions Sorry, league. the Champions League. Champions league. Champions league. Yeah. 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 Won Champions League with a team who should never have done it. He had a summer win. That was his first window. Who did he sign? Lukaku? 100 million, we don't even know till this day. We don't even know if Lukaku was a target from that Tuka wanted. No, it was, right? it was, it no was, the club, the club's going to protect the club's going to protect him, whether it was his target or not. They're not going to expose that. Oh, the, yeah, but they'll, they'll sack him in the end, right? If it doesn't work out, what happens is the manager usually gets the, the blame, but he's the one who gets sacked. So whether they blame him directly or not, he, he gets mm -hmm. sacked, he loses his job. And then, okay, we signed Lukaku, huge mistake, you know, one of the biggest flops. We've ever had. You can imagine somebody who is okay. I'm not gonna <sighs> look like a man. <laughs> um, okay, and 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 then we sign Saul. Two signings. Waste 100 million on Lukaku, and we bring in Saul. No, 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 no. But, but, but okay. Uh, the bottom line here is, from what it says, when do we not fully judge him? Are you saying that if he flops this year, but like, okay, give him to the general window? No, give him to the next transfer window. When is it like you're in the hot seats? We're not gonna judge you now. Okay, I think this this is his first real um, transfer window, summer window. Let's put it like that. So Last season was a we judge him. So, so, so this season we exactly. Judge him. So what what I'm looking for this season is some kind of improvements, right? Improvements Wait, in sorry. the way we play. Sorry, did I hear correctly? This. Transfer window is the first official one. No, we don't count last summer. Yes, I don't. I definitely don't count last. Look at look at who we signed. We signed Saul and, and Lukaku. So yeah, for me, this you judge him based on this window. You judge the signings he's he's made, and you judge the way the team plays, and let's see the improvements, and then we go from there. I think that's all fair right, enough. Right. Um, Casey, no jokes. Morata must actually walk with Ra Morata. Isn't doesn't come in anywhere near, 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 near the bridge. No, no, get good now, <laughs> no. No. Like, Cobham, shout out to Eric and the panel. What happened to Half Hope's hair? 
Last time he was, I was here. He had a full brand of hair, looking like the Black Harry Styles. Um, Diego, Diego, Mara. Okay, I am a hundred and twenty-five kilograms and was in the shadow squad versus LA Blues. Shout out to you, Diego, man. Shout out to you, Diego. Lovely. Lovely to hear from me, bro. Lovely. Elsie, Mount isn't even a central midfielder. He's a winger now. Bro, I don't, like, I think I don't give a damn about that dude, man. You know, like, Eric, I, I know you love him and everything. I don't care about that clown, man. Um, David T, lost to a club with an escort. <laughs> an escort them CFC is gold, man. Oh, man, shut up, man. Elsie, Alvarez is looking very good. Need him for the World Cup, too. Vito, this is what I've said to the people, man. Don't be surprised if Alvarez outperforms Haaland next season. Don't be surprised. You Look, mean like you mean stat wise? Performance wise. Performance wise? That's people will say Alvarez had a better season than Haaland. Okay. I I judge I judge players on total football. Right, I, I because of all the sports that I consume, I can see when one player gets the attention of many. All the opposing teams, if if they're in the lock, if they're in the locker room, if anything's being drawn up, it's all about stop this man Holland. Everyone's going to be focused on that. If, if Alvarez is able to like, what's that? Um, what's that fish that eats off the shark? Piranha. No, piranhas. Swordfish, are, starfish. No, but so there, there's a fish that just just follows Nemo. sharks around and eats all of the scraps. If all if all the focus is going to happen on Holland and Alvarez can clean up and and do damage, I'm not mad at that. What you're saying, I'm not mad at that. But hey, know that Holland's going to get the focus. Know that he's going to get the focus. Well, no, we shall see, man. We shall see. He's um, going to be dangerous. He's going to be dangerous. There's Mollus? no doubt. No doubt. Flounder. Mollusks? I'm gonna I'm look it up. I'm, that's Parasites? for the chat. No, it's it's, it's kind of like a, a pair. It's a Ramora. Ramora, Ramora. Oh, big ups, big ups. There you go. Ramora. Oh, shall see baby. Yeah, Ramora. I would have heard of that. I mean, because no, I remember. You know, it's so crazy. I I thought starfish were didn't say. I thought that was just like from Disney cartoons. But when I was younger, I went to Nassau, an island called Nassau, and actually saw a starfish. Crazy. Oh, word. Yeah, yeah, they're crazy. real. They're real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, that, that's crazy, you know. Um, hey, you've never seen a starfish. No, that's the first time I saw a starfish in, in real. I, I thought it was made up like by Disney. Like, I was like, how old was I? I was six or seven. I was seven years old, bro. I thought I thought starfish was a Disney creation, man. Relax. And I was like, oh shit, that's a, that's a starfish. It's actually it's actually like a star, like you know, like where is its eyes and its mouth and everything. Did so. did did either of you watch the the city pre preseason match? Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Alvarez. Yeah, so Grealish. yeah, Grealish is getting busy too. Oh, he's getting busy. We're gonna oh the chats? Oh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. <laughs> okay, look, let's 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 talk about re rejection now. Let's talk about rejection. Um I think I need to have a sit down with Terry. Terry Flows. I think me and Terry just sit down and just have a discussion. Because I kept on being told that he wants to go to United. He wants to go to United. United have, have Paul. United are one of the biggest clubs in the world. He wants to go. He wants to go. And this is all about, you know, the English media, Spanish media, propaganda. <laughs> if Sky Sports tweets out and says, De Jong wants to stay at Barca. He doesn't want to go at United because he's worried about how that club is run. That's an L. That's an L. And my thing is that I'm not shocked because I was trying to explain to you guys that why would Frank de Jong want to go to Man United in 2022? The only thing that is attracting him is daddy. But that isn't enough of an attraction because he's on a great switch at Barca. You have, you're, you're playing with Pedri, Gavi, Kessie, Lewandowski is coming in through, Rafinha is coming in through. That's a lot better than, M and that's MBE, God Save the Queen Merchants. And mix sauce and Flintstones. Hey, the Flintstones, they're the monastery family. I mean, come on, bro. Come on. Like, it's like, like who wants to go back to that, man? So, R R Ricardo, why why were we lied to by the, by United fans who try to sell us the idea that Frankie wanted to go to Man United? Because they want to seem like they're still a big club. They've always do this every year. They're not that club anymore. They haven't been that club in quite a long time. Look, 
<laughs> I don't like if he doesn't go to United, which he there's a chance he might, even though I don't think so. This whole transfer window for United has been a massive disappointment. Massive disappointment. I would say as a flop as a whole. I think they're putting way too many they're putting all their eggs in one basket and one player. So if they don't get that player, is this a write-off season already? Because like the amount of emphasis they have put on one player is kind of alarming in my opinion. It's almost signaling like if they don't get this one player, then Ten Hag system is not gonna work to its full potential, and it's not just it's not gonna work. Period. And so it's, bro. It's like, look, you can see the United fans in the chat say I waffle so much or whatever. But it's like, if that's your only thing you have to say, is because you know your own club doesn't have the leverage and doesn't have the pull anymore it once used to. And like at this point. Bro, the guy looks like he doesn't want to leave. It, it, all the leverage is on his side. It's not the club. It's not Barcelona. It's not Manchester United. It's on Frankie. Frankie doesn't want to leave. This has been his opinion has not changed since these rumors have quite literally started. When they have literally started till this day, the opinion of his his opinion is still the same. He does not want to leave Barcelona. So why are you still after this player? Like I'm not saying he probably won't end up there, but the fact that you have taken this long. And you still haven't pulled the player, just shows you the state of Manchester United. So I'm just saying it's like if they don't get Frankie De Jong, what is United's expectations? And how are they gonna judge Ten Hag? Are they gonna judge him fairly? Or are they gonna use this as an excuse that well, we didn't get the player he wanted, but you literally chased the player the entire summer, a player that has told you on record several times over he does not want to go the shit makes no sense and i think united they have to hold it like i'm sorry they do oh look and i think this is what i was trying to explain to terry because i do agree with terry in a sense of when he says united are generates a lot of social media traffic and they're very popular that's if you speak about united or so forth and you look when you look at the activity of united it's always very high based on how popular it was and it, because it was a castle that fergie built that is that has still so, so sustained the kind of interest around the world based on what ferguson created but that popularity is slowly being chipped away now it's just like Arsenal, because of what Fenger built and everything, people are now tuned in to the negativity and the fall of this great castle and this great institution. But when it comes to football relevancy, United are not relevant football-wise. If you've not won a trophy in six years, and you look at the state of the team and the players, it's not a desirable place to go to. And your popularity alone ain't going to be good enough. Frank De Jong doesn't give a damn that United are popular or they have a huge global fan base. He's like, what does the team look like? How will it fit within me? Where are they going? And if I'm Frankie de Jong's agent, United is a horrible move. Agent, that is you know, a horrible what, you move. know what would make it even worse on United's end is if he has his mind closed to Manchester United. But if another team comes in, then maybe like Chelsea, because there's been rumors, mm -hmm. if Chelsea come in and take them, bro, like that's that's an even bigger L. <laughs> it's a massive L. I'm sorry. Whether it's Bayern, whether it's PSG, whatever team takes them that has Champions League. Like, I think if United did have Champions League football, I think it would have been done by now. Yeah, but I, right. I think I think when he's putting it in, into – when I'm trying to think of from his perspective, right? Yeah. Outside of maybe the money he's owed, which we don't know the actual amount rather than what's been reported. He played um, – what's it called? He played – Europa League last season. Do you think he's going to want to go to a club that's going to play Europa League again with no guarantee that they'll make Champions League the next year no. and probably play? He's not playing Europa League three years in a row. Like, I mean, it's going to be two years in a row if he goes to Manchester United. I'm sorry. Frankie is a player that deserves to play Champions League football. That's his level. Europa League, I really don't know. Yeah. I mean, before I go to Mike, and I think that's the, that's the thing because for United fans, it's as if they can't take a step back and just look at this objectively and realistically. Because in their mind, it's like, oh, it's Man United, it's still a big club and so forth. You can't ignore the fact of what your trajectory has been for the last six years, what happened to you last season, and the fact that an unproven guy is coming through. 
Yes, Ten Hag is the only proof because he works with him. But from Frenkie's point of view is, once I left Ten Hag and Ajax, I'm now leaving because I'm now going up. Him going to United with Ten Hag, that is a step backwards. I'm sorry. As painful as it may be to sound to United fans, Frank De Jong going from Barca, specifically with the summer that they've had, going to United where they've only said was Lisandro Martinez and Eriksen, that's a step in the right direction. Barca have just signed Rafinha and one of the best players in the world in Lewandowski. That is now where they're going. So to leave that to what? Eriksen and Lisandro Ma Ma Martinez, you're taking a step backwards. I'm sorry, like, as harsh as it may sound, that is a step backwards. I also want to add to this thing. It's I think it's a lot to do with damage control as well. I think Manchester United cannot stand that a player like Frankie De Jong is not, like, I'm not saying Frankie De Jong is at the pinnacle of football because he's not, but he's also not the worst player either. He's a mm. good player, but that's about it uh, right now at least. Under 10 Hag, do I think he can take him to a world-class level? Yes, I do think he can do that. However, they, I find it funny that from the beginning, they said that he doesn't want to leave Barcelona. He doesn't want to leave Barcelona. And when this thing was dragged along, somehow they spun the narrative that he doesn't want to leave Barcelona, not because he prefers to play for the club, but because it's a of a deferred salary. So if he's staying because of a deferred salary, it's kind of a you're doing damage control and just not accepting the fact that he's rejecting to go to your club to make United look better. I, I and the fact that this is still the case, like the last thing that would want to happen, the last thing that would want to happen is that this that Frankie Jean decides to take a wage cut because then it, money has never been the issue. He's willing to take even less money just to stay at Barcelona. Even if Barcelona was to offer him off to Manchester United and he still doesn't want to leave. Like, how do you push somebody out the door and they still don't want to go? Like, <laughs> my, point is, my point is not what Barcelona want to do with him or how much Manchester United want him. It's the fact that Frankie De Jong doesn't want to go to Manchester United and quite evident that is his only option that we are currently speaking of. If he had an other option, things may have be, may have been different. But considering United is the only option and he doesn't even want to go to his only option, speaks levels about where Manchester United are. Hey, Chich, uh, could, could I go, can I go next? All right, quick, go for it. I'll come to you, Mike. All right, go for it. Uh, yeah, I'll be, very, I'll be very quick. I need to, I need to leave anyway. Okay. Look, I, I think um, <laughs> the thing with this, I, I said it before, I, I, I didn't think he wanted to, just like Ricardo said, I don't think he wants to go to United. And I know what the, you know, what, you know, what or two people may have said or reported, but that was my feeling. You know, it didn't seem, he's like the whole Rafinha thing. Oh yeah, he's not against moving, but he doesn't really want to move. He has one target, right? And I, I think the young target is to just stay. He doesn't want to go anywhere. And I just found it ironic how, you know, apparently he doesn't want to make the move because he's worried about the way the club is run and he's a Barcelona player. So that's a huge L. That's a big L, you know. But the thing is that that's that's always the difference between a club like Barca and a club like uh, but, but, United. But, but Eric, do you know what makes it so painful? Is I see if let's say it was like a Spanish account that had that headline, oh, propaganda and everything, is that it came from Sky Sports. The fact yeah. that Sky Sports reported that, that is the biggest L for Money Nights. Because now it's it's like, huge. You, you can't even say anything. That, that Sky Sports, an English thing, puts that out there that he doesn't want to go there because of how the club is run. That is the biggest insult. It's United the biggest are, insult. United are pretenders. They, they are a historically big club at this point. I mean, it's getting really bad now. Yeah. B Barcelona is still a big club, obviously. Um, thank, thank you, my, my, my thank no, it's true. Yeah. No, 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 no. no because yeah. see, I, I know, like, I bad mouth bats and everything because I'm angry with the way of how things are going. But if we're going to be real and so forth, if you're between Barca and, um, and United, United, they're not re relevant. Football was they're not relevant. Barca still are. United, when it's okay, football relevance, you hold the guys. United are not are not in the conversation. So if you're any if you're a player worth anything that you want to go places, you don't go to Man United. And guys, I'm sorry, I know it sounds painful, but these are just the cold facts. You can't go six years without winning any trophy with the kind of issues you've had, the kind of matches that have come in and out, the kind of players that have gone there and have flopped. When last did a player go to United and his career actually improved? You can't, you can't name it. 
So this is just the facts. I'm sorry. Mike, talk to me, man. To be honest, I gave up on this transfer first week of June. Because it's just so, it's just so many news and this and that. I think if you're a United fan, you should just be more pissed off with your board and with Myrtle. I think he's the sporting director now for Manchester United. Why don't you have a plan B? Why don't you go for somebody else? Okay, we can't get Frankie De Jong. Let's go for somebody else. We can focus on maybe Frankie De Jong later in the transfer window. Why don't you go for like example Sangare from PSV? He's a good player. I don't obviously he's not Frank and De Young level. I'm not saying that, but he's a good player. So why don't you get mad at the board for not having a clear structure? This has been the problem for United for many years. There is still no structure at this club when it comes to signings. Yes, they got Lisandro Martinez, they got Ericsson, but still, what's the idea? What 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 is your ultimate goal as Manchester United to get back to the top? And at this moment, you are far far away and for Frankie De Jong it's clear the player does not want to leave what why would he leave Champions League football the club he always wanted to play for in Barcelona the only way he's gonna leave is if Barcelona force him out and say you know what look we can't do anything but he has a contract and he can just say I could just stay here I don't mind I'll just do an umtiti and just you know ride the bench or Xavi will have to play me so the only way this is going to be done I think is going to be like August 30th or 31st and we see you Frank and De Jong in the Manchester United jersey. But otherwise, I don't think this is going to happen. The player doesn't want it. Manchester United are desperate for him because they know if they don't get him, they are stuck with McFred. And have fun with that. Ten Hag will get a reality. Oh, it looks good against Melbourne Victory and Liverpool's B slash C team and Crystal Palace. But when it comes to the Premier League, you're going to get a reality check then, Ten Hag. I, I rate the manager. I think he's a really good... I think he's perfect for United because of all the garbage managers they've had in the past but it's it's going to be a reality check and it's going to be a lot of years until they can get back to the top but <sighs> frank and Dion, man he doesn't want to come to your club and you just you, have to accept it do you think this transfer extends till next summer because yes it's I'm gonna be thinking, a central because i'm thinking that chavi clearly has frankie in his plans right mm -hmm. there's no way barcelona let him go and don't try to replace him with like let's say he let like he lets him go with maybe one week left in the transfer market. Mm. They, it's been reported that if Frankie De Jong goes, they're gonna push full strength for Bernardo Silva. I don't think Man City would let go of Bernardo Silva at the last week of a transfer window. So if they're not willing to let Frank De Jong go right now, the odds are they're not gonna let him go later on. So mm -hmm. this is something that can extend all the way to the falling transfer window until maybe they find another option. Ricardo, I could see something like next summer, Frankie De Jong goes to Manchester United and then Bernardo Silva comes to Barcelona. I could see something but like no, that but, happening but, but, next summer. But how long is Frankie's contract? Like, I when think is he has now? three years left, I think. Could be wrong. But my thing, though, is okay. If my gave is okay, the idea is Frankie go, Bernardo comes in. I'm sure Vince will tell you. Pep doesn't want to let Bernardo Silva No, but I'm saying next and, summer. And, and if he is, but even if it's next summer, there's going to be a massive price on that. And, yeah, I, and Pep... A million. <laughs> it depends on the season he has, because last season, nobody was holding Silva to their guard that were holding him right now, if we're being honest. Like, they were, they were literally going to I've, let him go. Look, now they don't want to let him go, because clearly his value has gone up, which is understandable. I've, I keep on saying that, yes, your best player can have bad games, can have a bad moment, but he's still your best player. But Edu Silva is the most talented player that City have. He's their best player. De Bruyne is the most consistent and plays a key role. But the most talented player, best football player that they have is Bernardo Silva. And if Pep lets that guy go, that is a massive loss. That's a massive loss. It's... Was, was, what's it called? Um, um, buy one, get one free, cut rate um, Gucci. Um, ain't gonna cut it. <laughs> what, what's his name? Jack leash or, 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 or freakish jack gucci grealish yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so uh, look, look face i mean look frankie man i mean should united just hold the l man like th this th this is an l for united man like it's... They, they, they can't man, man united is all about ego that's all that it is look at their fan base it's all ego we were winners this is this is how i grew i grew up manchester united winning it's all ego. And right now, it's a standoff. It's an ego standoff because they've gone so far. They've already said Frankie is part of the plan. 
they've talked all about the how they're connected, the six degrees of separation with him and the manager, how he fits in the system. They can't turn back now. They can't. So it's it, it's an ego battle right now. I no disrespect to Ricardo, but even with the turmoil that Barca is going through and, and having, Frankie's still like, nah, man, I'll, I'm, I'm going to rather stay here than go to United. So money's, I, I don't even, I don't even think money is what's hanging this up. It's about the, it's a, it's the potential. It's about the playing the playing football. It's about being in a destination that's going to be good career wise. Frankie only has to look at the recent history with who's gone there and what, what's developed their goat is looking to lead that club greats that have gone there haven't had the seasons that one would expect and why would he leave champions league playing barca to go to europa man united no guarantees that they're even going to crack into the top four next year even if if he were to join i i think the man's just looked at i'm, I'm making career moves right now and I have to say the right things in the public because I don't want to come across like a jerk and being hated by by both fan bases. But no, nah, it's, it's best to be at Barca. Yeah, I also want to add too. It's kind of like I think with Messi leaving last year, I can guarantee you everybody in that Barcelona squad thought this year is going to be a write off. Like it's going to be a write off. So they were willing to swallow whatever came. Pause. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy Bro, I didn't even that it like was this. as in both like double yeah, yeah. wow I, oh wow wow hey Krakauda that's a clip that's a clip no, sorry my bad. I, I didn't even view it like that <laughs> no but my point is like the whole team knew it was gonna happen I don't want to say it again knew it was yeah. gonna happen I don't think they saw like seventh to tenth place before Coleman got sacked in La Liga and I don't think I don't think they saw the the Europa League out of the group stage so like I don't think that's what they anticipated but the fact that that was a reality I think after <laughs> everything that happened all the signs they have made so far I think every player in that Barcelona camp is feeling a lot more confident about next season so why would he leave while well, United <laughs> Gotnaldo doesn't want to be there so and and you know what, I I forget who said it. Was it Mourinho? Was it Van uh, Van Gaal? Was, who said that Man United isn't a football club? It's Van a Hall. football. Well, it's a football it brand, Hall. right? Yeah. So, yeah. from a brand standpoint, this is a terrible look. Terrible look. They look like stalkers right now, not yeah, yeah, giving yeah. up, not like. I have heard my sights, and that is all that's happening. They look like stalkers right now with Frankie. And as a player, you don't want all that pressure either. You don't want everything weighed. You don't want to be in the tabloids. You don't want to be talked about every single damn day. And then when you finally end, end up there, imagine the scrutiny he's going to be under. Oh, no, no, no. But I, think, but I think it is very tough for United fans to take this because I think last season, their worst ever points total in Premier League history, combined with you can't take and leo a guy like a Frankie, like your your Man United self can't leo a guy like that. And really, all you've signed is Alessandro Martinez and an Ericsson, two guys who aren't the most heralded guys out there. Pogba has not tried to now run away from you. I think United fans are now faced the reality. Of, Look, and here's my thing: it happens. United United are going to be back. They will be back. But the same thing happened to Milan, bro. No, very few clubs come bigger than freaking AC Milan. You know, AC Milan, like AC Milan was the biggest club in the world when I was growing up. So, and this is AC Milan, one of the yeah, most recognizable cycles. badges. But for a, for a whole decade, they had to say, look, we just don't have the pole. And we had guys like George Weir, Van Basten, Mal we had the guys. But we just have to just take, be humble that we're not here now, but we're going to come again. But we just have to not take it. And so for United, you're just going to have to just accept like a similar that we're gonna have to take a step back that we're just not those dudes anymore i don't think the fans i don't think the fans are built for it though 
they're, and they're gonna have... do, 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 do you know what the issue is? It is the arrogance of the English media. Because the English media, they feed into the whole Man United, Man United, Man United, which is all cool, but reality hits. Mm -hmm. Because Frank de Jong doesn't give a crap about all that media hype. He's like, no, I have to do what's best for, for self. So I don't care what United are as a brand and so forth. I am not going to that situation because that situation is a mess and that is bad for, for me. And if I was advising Frank de Jong, that would be a horrible move for you to move from Barca to United. It would be a horrendous move. HH, they have to, if, if you're in United, you have to just move on from this deal and just focus on rebuilding the squad and not just focusing on just the one player like we have talked about. They have to go sign another quality you have, player. No, 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 but, but Mike, I said this from the beginning of like, that's what you have scouts for. Yes. You have scouts is like, a scouts will say, we've got a list of five. Mm. One, two, three, four, five. This is my number one. If you can get the number one, all right. Second. All right. Third. Fourth. And you'll get them. Like, bro, we've all played football manager. <laughs> and in football manager and so forth, your scouts will now give you a bunch of guys. Now, this is the guy I definitely wants. If I try and the guy's taking too long, bro, okay, who's number two? Okay, who, who's number three? Because these five all fit into what I want. But this number one really fits in well and it's great. But if I can't get him, I can't get him. But I can still work with a number two. I can still work with a, a number three. So my issue is, and this might, that's why I'm worried. Do you have other alternatives or is this Frankie or Bust? It's plan A and that's it. That's, <laughs> it's uh, four. Bro, bro, man, that's 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 sad, man. Or let's see what the kids are saying, man. Um, so, uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Uh, shout out to your boy Michael Buford. The only thing I remember is Iniesta hitting top bins and Drogba screaming at the camera. He lost to a team that was founded before COVID. Sits down, sir. Um, Mike. I don't refer to games where cheating was involved and a referee was paid. That game is a farce. That game is a farce. So you saying that doesn't mean anything because that game is a complete farce. And I don't I, I don't recognize or accept that game. And I, and I never will. Cobham. Oga, the market for attackers is low. Only one is CR7. He might go to Atletico, man. Do you do you believe it? I mean, how no, is that athletic thing? I don't believe it, but oh, <laughs> yeah, push comes to shove, he might just be a colchonero, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, look, see, my thing is that I won't, I won't put it past Cristiano going to athletic. Like for me, he does. Cristiano only cares about himself. He doesn't care about oh, how does it look like for real? I, I hope he doesn't think that he's gonna pump fake <laughs> Real Madrid. Like that, <laughs> like you try to do the Manchester clubs because Perez is not it's, no, it's like not. Perez is going to be like he's uh, not flinching. No, no, it's like no, as I know that's a, that's a no dog. That's a no. Um, Cobham, HH already jinxed this club. He jinxed my Arab all ownership dream, and now he's jinxed this ownership by giving him a nickname Todd B before the window. I haven't jinxed anything. When the window ends, then we can readdress things. The night is still young. The night is still young. Shows you boy Mega. Eric is so calm because he has a white girlfriend. Alps. Um, HH, my football IQ is over 9,000. Grealish will, will cook. Based on the, the, the doves you've sent, I don't think your football IQ is over 200, bro. Just me being real. Mo Ozil. LL, don't forget about your £72 million flop who scored the winning goal in the UCL final. I know, I know. He scored the winning goal in the UCL final. I know. Thank you for telling me. Can you really be a flop? Hold on for a second. If this supposed player scores you the game-winning Champions League goal, can you still be considered a flop? Not really. You see, you can't be a flop. Now, you can be, like, underwhelming. You can not do well. But if you score, and also... I can't start scoring in the semi. I don't. Venet didn't score that. That was Havertz's goal. Venet so like, stole it. So like, Michael, Michael, you support Liverpool, right? Yep. So let's say, let's say Darwin, Sir Charles Darwin Nunes has a stinker of a season. Maybe like five goals in the Premier League, two goals in the Champions League. But you guys go to the Champions League and he scores the winning goal. Is it a flop? No, he's a better signing than Holland. Then. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I don't. I wouldn't care if he scores the 
winning goal in the Champions League final. That's all that matters. Like, HH, HH, is Torres a flop? Who? Yes. Fernando Torres. Yes. Okay, Wait, but he, he, he got you the goal to go to the Champions yeah. League final. No, 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 no. He, he, people always f- forget that. He did, even if he didn't score, Chelsea were already going to go through. Yeah. Did they, but they he did they no, tie no, 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 no. People always say, no, that was the goal that just said, boom. Bas, Chelsea were going through. That goal just meant, I think Bas now needed two more goals. But Chelsea were going, that's why Chelsea had all men behind the ball and defending. Chelsea oh, yeah, were going you're through. Right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Torres just sort of ended all t- So, so yeah, the, the goal the, yeah, wasn't was the goal flop. that decided it. Yeah. So kept, somebody said it's got set a flop. I want he was a flop on a club level, but in wait, terms who? of what he got it's set, flop. Mario got set. on the club level, he's a flop because he I mean, was, wonder, yeah, club level is a flop, but bro, you scored the walk up in the goal. Yeah, you, like nobody's <laughs> gonna forget your name to be honest. Yeah, so. no, like like you will you are you are forever etched in and that, and that's the thing. Messi, of course, now Messi has had a greater career than him and so forth. But God's gonna be like, I scored the walk up winning goal while yeah. you're on, on, on the you know, pitch. No, the crazy thing is, is that that goal alone is what's keeping his name in history. Because had he not scored that goal, his oh. career club flops. He'll be fo- totally forgotten. Nobody's talking about him. No, no, basically, say, oh yeah, there was that guy that was pretty good who helped Dortmund get to the UCL final. But without that, bro, you scored the World Cup winning goal that gave Germany their fourth World Cup while Messi <laughs> was on the pitch. Yeah, I mean, come on, bro, it doesn't come any bigger than that, man. Um, what's it called? Shout out to your boy. Um, Korban Milinkovic. HH, Terry needs to go to an AA meet, meeting surrounded by his close friends and family. If the news about FDG is announced, please tell him to get off the ledge. I actually want to know what his reaction will, will be if that thing is announced. If, let's say, it's actually confirmed that homeboy isn't coming through, I actually want to know what his reaction will be, man, because that's a huge L. That's a huge L, man. Barry, big up everybody in the panel and the streets, man. Barry, big up to you, man, football hot member. Big up to you, bro. Sir Alex Brogerson, United need Christopher Cupcake and Emery Can of Coke. <laughs> Shout out to you, bro, man. Thank you for the dope, man. Thank you, bro. AR the Madrista, my football hot member. Thank you, bro. Players talk to each other. He saw how they treated Donny, and no one wants to play with McFred. Terry and Goldbridge are looking real funny. As I said again, this is going to be a painful, painful reality check for United fans. Very, very painful, bro. All right, let's... Last two topics, man. So let's hit this one. Um, Ricardo, yep. why are you disposing of, of Drake? <laughs> what? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 I got confused for a second. You know what I think? I don't think he wants to leave because ever since that, uh, we got that Spotify sponsorship, it might yeah, actually help his no. music career. So yes. I, mean, I don't blame him, because eh? there's got to be, you got to do something after football. You can't yes. just, so I, I <laughs> the Dutch Drake, man. Like, I, I don't blame him for staying. Like, if there's a time to be at Barcelona, you want to seek a music career. <laughs> the time is now. You know, but, but, but I think even beyond that, though, like, again, music career tax is there. But because <laughs> I, I saw like um, when he first signed, and like a behind the scenes thing, he was so happy. And yeah. I think for him, it's like, bro, United didn't work, work out. He thought he was going down. Because remember, he 2014 World Cup, he was like the new big thing. Yeah, he goes to United. His big move, he didn't really work out. He now goes back to Leon, which is like a step down. But then he now does well at Leon. So now yeah, him exactly. going to Bass, like, bro, that's it. I came back and it was really big for him. So it's very painful for him to now be like, it's now done. But you, see, this is where you have now face reality. Lewandowski has entered the chats, man. He's the only player that is, is guaranteed a starting spot. The only player. So so, and, um, so so my thing is that if you're Dodo Pio, where the hell do you play? And uh, even if, because my thing is that Javi may, may, may have Aubameyang out wide or something like that, maybe Aubameyang and Lewandowski. For Dodo Pio, you're a bench player now. You're yeah. not a starter anymore. You're a bench player. And my thing that's cool. Bench player or not, you will still start for Van Hal at the World Cup for sure. Yeah. But the, but the thing though is you are surplus to requirements. But here's the thing though. Do you go to United? You know what? It's... Because even at United, are you actually even guaranteed to start at United? Because if Martial, Rashford, and Sancho are playing well, you're not even guaranteed to, to start there. No, you know what I'll say? Like, I, I, I do feel for him because he, when he signed to Barcelona, the fans were like, cool, 
I don't think everybody was over the moon, but it was a good signing for the time being because it was only two years anyways. But it was definitely a signing that was from Coleman, right? Yeah. And what we saw from him, to be fair, the first, the start of the season, he was good for us. He was scoring goals. Uh, he was performing, but he had an injury and then really, really messed him up. Um, he didn't really come back to form. You know, players started playing better. He never really found his starting spot. And when he did, it just wasn't a fit. Like, I think generally speaking, watching him this last season, one thing that annoyed me a lot about Memphis is that he doesn't have the speed and, like, the quick play to play for Barcelona because every time he got the ball, always holding up play a little bit too long, making the wrong passes, taking on players when he just makes simple passes. Everything was just like he was just always lagging the play. And it became very frustrating to watch because he became very predictable. And, and that was hurt, hurt our attack. So it, it, it was a weird season because it's not fair. It, it's, it'd be unfair just to ship him off after one year. Right, I mean, I don't think he was really ever in the like. If Xavi was there from the start, I don't think Memphis would even get signed. Period. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, the guy obviously was excited because it's kind of like he saw this. This is a second life at a top club, and because it didn't work out at United, you know, he balled in Leon, came to Barca, a fresh start. The manager that wanted him gets bounced in like the first four mount four months. So then now he's in a weird position. But reality is like if I'm looking because Barcelona are always gonna play four three three. That's kind of like what they live and die for. The uh, the striker position or center forward, whichever the way he likes Chavi likes to use it, is it's a lock. It's Lewandowski. That is non-negotiable. So the, who's gonna play backup for him? It most likely will be Obama Yang. Yeah. And and even Obama, like, when is he ever really gonna play consistently? Like, he'll probably play all the Ray games if Lewandowski gets injured, but Lewandowski doesn't really get injured very often. Um, the good thing about Obama Yang is that he can play out wide on the left, but that might be a little bit past him because of the age, but also because there's better options on Sufati if he can play straight, is a far better option. And then obviously, there's Ferran Torres. But and then Memphis Depay is weird because he's almost the two spaces he occupies is the same space that Obama Yang occupies, which is either the left or the center position. And he's not starting over all over Lewandowski. And at the left, there's just way better options. So the, the guy looks like he's barely gonna get any playing time. I think he will play though, but I think it's gonna be another frustrating season that he's barely going to play. And when he does play, it's not going to be good enough for the level that we're looking for. So I think him going to Manchester United is actually a – if he wants to play, I, I can understand why a player wouldn't want to go back to that environment because it didn't work the first time. And then mm. you can argue that the club, the state of the club, is actually worse right now than when he actually signed because when he signed to United the first time around, it was only one year removed when Ferguson had yeah, left. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It was in a much better state. So yeah, it was in a much yeah so – um that, so like yeah for memphis i mean i, I it's no, no, but, I, but, but i think the, the one draw if you want to trust try and look at this glass half full is ten hag he's dutch yeah. so maybe he will appreciate what he can do a lot more than a javi because i think for javi as you've just said you just don't work for the kind of vibe and the way that Barcelona move the ball around but most dutch people whether you're the manager or you're a player you all think the same so I think him now coming in, I think Ten Hag, because he's his Dutch, will try to sort of give him a benefit of the, of, of the doubt and perhaps, I would say, try to push him and play my head over a, a, a Rashford, who I still think will be yeah, trash. Yeah, uh, like, so, I, 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 don't, I don't think... And, and for, for, let's be real, I, 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 I'm not here to United. I think this would be a good signing for United. I, see, that's the it thing. Like, I, don't, I think for, for Ten Hag, it would be a, a good option. Um, will he start over the front three if excluding Ronaldo Rash, 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 yeah. Rash, uh, like Rash I think I think I think he will start I think he'll definitely play a lot more however does he want to go back to the institution of Manchester United considering how it failed the first time so I'm pretty sure like the worst thing he could do is go back to United and the same shit happens then he really only has himself to blame because he had a first time experience and it didn't go well. So why did he think a second time would? And it can't just be about the manager. Like it, it, he's in a weird predicament. And I think I think there was links to him in Tottenham. Mm. I, I think 
him and Tottenham is probably a better option. I mean, I don't think he'll win anything anyways, but um, he's kind of in his weird position. But I always thought Memphis, like, when it comes to playing at the top clubs, like, he just isn't that guy. I think there's just, you know, he's kind of like that guy to play at a mid-tier team and do yes. well there. No, no, because for me, I, I still think that he's a talented player. He's just, he's, he's a very good tier two player. Yeah. He's like a top, right at the top end tier two. He's just a guy that can never be in that tier one kind of elite level, really. Um, Vito, talk to me, man. I think, I think Lingard stole the spot that Memphis could have gone to. Lingard with that, what's he getting? Two hundred k at at Forest. Uh, Nottingham Forest. That's kind of like the level where, if Memphis is looking to get out, looking for a club that's on the come up, he he needs to go, he needs to go. There's too there's too much competition at his position, like Ricardo's talking about. And if he were to go to United, it'd be the same situation because they got Alanga, they got Rashford, they got Martial. Um, I don't know what the status of Cristiano Ronaldo is. But he's better um, than those guys, surely. So what, he's better than those guys, surely. But he's going to compete. He's going to have to compete there. No, but I'm saying his competition is severely less. It is, it is, but (laughs) when you hear, when you hear United fans, everyone's looking ready to play for Mr. Ten Hag. So if he were to go, he'd have to prove himself again, coming to United. Um, This is, he's one of the players that you just kind of look back and you're like, you didn't really, you didn't really do anything. Like you, You didn't really... You didn't really do anything for the name that you had and the and the hype that was around you. You know what I mean? So I don't know where he ends up, man. I don't I don't I don't want to say that good football is behind him. I don't I think that's a little too soon to say. But he he's not he's not going to another quote unquote legacy clubs. I don't think obviously where do you go? to be equal level with a Barca. Any of those, none of those clubs are looking for him. Nah, that's so not. that's why I brought up, you know, Nottingham Forest, no, no, maybe a Newcastle, you know, like something so, so, like so, so, that. But, okay, here's my thing. So if, let's say, Barca go to Memphis, that we can't guarantee you first team, your surplus to requirements and so forth, what do you do? Are you like, I'm going to dig my heels in and just go extra hard in training and trying to fight for my place? Or am I like, look, Let's just try and look at United. Let's look at Tottenham. Let's just look at somewhere where I can... Because remember, you're guaranteed to start for the Netherlands and so forth. But it is always good because it's happening mid-season. You want to go into that World Cup match fit. You don't want to go into that World Cup where you're a bench player. Yeah, yeah. Because really, this World Cup is, is unique in the sense of this is the first World Cup we'll ha- for where guys will go in fully match fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. guys will, will, will go in like fully match fit yeah. so you want to take Middle advantage of, of that because if you can go in fully match fit guys are saying that Netherlands are like a dark horse to do something and I think Memphis Depay is very important for Netherlands if they, 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 they want to go, go far so it's about look it is what it is Lewandowski is here he, he's here and you have to be realistic because that as Ricardo just said he doesn't get he hardly gets injured so you're really not going to play that much yeah, and, yeah. Awesome. and and I'm 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 with you with that. I just don't. <sighs> United is a big top club. I know there's I know they finished sixth or whatever, mm-hmm. and they're they're on the come up. But what I meant by maybe he needs to look at a club that isn't quite there in terms of name, but is in that mix. Like and uh, he. He has to he has to kind of take a, a step back if he's looking for that consistent play and if he's looking to be one of the the key guys because he's not going to be a key guy at one of the one of the big clubs. Yeah, I also want to add to that is just that when you look at Chavi and how he plays, look if you look at the there are certain biases and profiles that he particularly looks at, and when I look at those profiles and biases he has, Depay is the the odd man out because. Chavi's system relies on very fast wingers. So he has Dembele, he has Rafinha. So that that takes the box for them. 
And then when you look at on the left side, you have Ansu Fati and you have Ferran Torres. I think after what we've seen this last six months, Ferran Torres is pretty much guaranteed a spot in the front line because of the space. Like he, what Ferran Torres is good at, and I think uh, he gets ridiculed a lot, is how he opens spaces and how he finds spaces. Because it's not a coincidence that he gets a lot of chances. The guy just sucks at finishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, but that's what, so when you have a player that can present these opportunities for himself in a in a in a game that in a, in a system that requires like op- creating spaces off the ball, Ferran Torres is important to Xavi's system. Ferran, I mean, uh, Ansu Fati is a bit of a different, a bit different because he's seen as Barcelona's golden boy. Not only that, but they want him to succeed. So if they can give him minutes, they will give him minutes. Like you're not going to be Barcelona's number 10 and become a role player. Like that's just not going to happen. So those profile of wingers, all four of those guys, fit Xavi's ideology. And Lewandowski is non-negotiable. For uh, Memphis, is technical, but he is, those he's not going to get favoritism on the left like Fati and Ferran Torres. And he's nowhere near as fast as Rafinha or Dembele. So he's in a very weird position that he may not even see, barely see any minutes. I'll be surprised. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if... Obama Young plays more games than Memphis. And that's a bad look, in my opinion. All right, let's let's hit this Dubez, man. Um, shout out to your boy, uh, AR, the Madrista, man. Thank you for the football hot member, man. Question to the panel How does Barca get the best out of De Jong? Is Busquets in the way, or is it a position information issue? Cassia is also there. Can people keep saying, is this whole double pivot thing? He needs, yeah. to play in a, he needs to play alongside someone, whereas that's how Barca play is. You have the sole guy, which is Busquets, that holds it, and then you have the two midfielders roaming ahead of him. But Frankie needs to play where the base is him and someone next to him there. Yeah. Um, so he, like, the, the thing is that with Frankie De Jong, I think it's just unfortunate that Busquets has lasted a lot longer than he how people anticipate but, but, but here's my thing though let's say Busquets retired and so forth could Frankie still fill that role well no that's how I was gonna get there I think what maybe people have anticipated was that by this time right now Busquets still wouldn't be where he is mm. let's not get twisted like if you watch Barcelona you can notice a massive difference when he plays and when he doesn't play we see mm. this in the Spanish national team as well so it's surprise it's not a surprise that you would think Rodri at this stage of his career would be benching Busquets in the national team, but that's not even the case. For Barcelona, after Messi, which Messi's an anomaly, so it doesn't really count, the most important player in that team has been Busquets. The guy has quite literally been the system. Yeah, so yeah. when he leaves, I think the mistake Barcelona could make is thinking they already have a player or they're going to find a player that can replace Busquets because there isn't a like-for-like replacement. Mm. Busquets, in a sense, is a very unique player for his particular role. Mm. So uh, I just don't think De Jong is ever going to reach his full potential because we don't we always play as a singular pivot, and he, he, that's not what takes the best out of De Jong. And we can see this when he plays on the Dutch national team. Yeah, it's like, different. Like, he plays way better, and it's because the system is catered to him. Um, but, yeah, I... I just think that nobody really thought Busquets was going to last this long. And the fact that he has, in a sense, hurt Frankie De Jong because he's never got to take that position like we saw at Ajax. But, and again, the formation, the position is not really catered to that anyway. So, but, and, and, and here's the thing. Is De Jong good enough or important enough for you to now reshape the midfield to suit him? Personally, I don't think so. And the reason why is because we already have a player that can play that position like a proper DM, not to the to the same level of Busquets or the same profile of Busquets for a defensive midfield position, but Nico Gonzalez is actually not a bad defensive midfielder himself. Um, so I would not be surprised if they never give him that position and they stick with Nico. Like he had a preseason game uh, a few days ago. I, I don't think it was just against Miami. I think it was the game before that as well. Mm-hmm. Nico Gonzalez looked very good in the defensive mid position. He's very physical, big kid. And that's his position, and I think he's just a different profile than what Busquets is, and they may go with that. Um, let me 
this right now. Um, shout out to your boy Alps. Silver, one year left. Either renews or City cash in. Is it? Is that true? Vito, is, is it? Does he only have one year left? I, I believe he's two years right now. So after this season, there'd be one. Oh no, no. I, actually, I think he's got three years left. So after this story. season, there's two left. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, the price will come down, but there'll be two years left on them. All right. Um, from Keenan, HH Havertz and Sterling gonna outscore Jesus and Saka. Here's the thing. I this would have said, G- if Jesus pops off, Arsenal could be somewhat of a threat. How well Arsenal do depends on how well Jesus does, and if Jesus clicks well with that team. Chelsea, I said again, I'm not putting my money on Havertz and Sterling scoring loads of, of goals. I think Sterling is going to do good for, for Chelsea. I think he's going to do good. But I think just as Victor said, I feel that to maximize Sterling, you probably, he needs to play off of a striker. Look at how good Sterling is for England. Who does he play off, off of? Kane. So he needs someone of that Harry Kane profile for him to now use as a decoy to make those runs into the box and, and, and be effective. You can't do that with a Havertz or a Venico. Those are mobile roaming strikers. You need that kind of a hurricane old school guy for Sterling to sort of roam in and off of, you know. So that's my thing. But I mean, um, if I was to answer that, I'd say no. I think Jesus and Saka may outscore them, but Chelsea as a whole will perform better than Arsenal. You know, like Arsenal is finishing above Chelsea. So that's fair. Dave, HH, a City fan on Twitter saying that KDB is the ghost Premier League midfielder and that it is stupid to say that he can't chat to Zidane as one of the best. Hashtag Silver is better. Silver is better. And I think it's boredom because Sports Bible, they were, I think they were bored by saying that, oh, who was, who, who's the better midfielder, KDB or Zidane? It's boredom. I think guys are just bored. Guys are just bored. Look, see, KDB is super effective and he is a talented mid- midfielder he isn't elite he isn't great and for me he isn't yeah, elite. Too See, that, that, that's, on, where, that's where you go too on. far <laughs> age, age, man what that's where you go too far he isn't do i need to bring up 2018 but bring, 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 bring bringing up a moment in 2018 player. like so what bring talk about his talk about his 20 assist season No, he ha- no, he can have an off year. Okay, he can have- I'll, okay, okay, so I'll give this. He's elite in the Premier League. For the Premier League, he's elite. He's not elite worldwide. No. You're Vito, talking about I, what you've seen no, no, Vito, in, in international him, play? Okay, has he bowled in a UCL final, a Euro <laughs> final, or a World Cup final? That's what I ask. Has he played at a high level in a World Cup final, Euro final, or UCL final? Isn't it funny that okay, Hazard but- has never played in any of those stages as well? Wait, who won? Wait, who won the European Cup in 2018? Oh with my Chelsea God! Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Mo Ozil, Mo Ozil, who had a better career, Aubameyang or Cavani? No, oh, Cavani did. What the hell? What the hell has Aubameyang won? What, like a couple what, Bundesliga? What did, he leave, what did he win over at Bundesliga? I think he the, would have won the league. Was it the first? The first two. Before th- no, he, he definitely won a DFB Pokal Cup for for sure. Oh my God! I'm not sure, I'm not sure whether he won a league. You see, are we counting Cavani's Uber Eats titles? Would you okay? Would you rather win mm. Uber Eats league titles or win a poker cup? Whatever the hell it's called, Ricardo <laughs> PSG. Doesn't and matter. What would you, say, I'm asking. Any, what no, would no, no, you rather? Any, what would that's you rather a great win? question. That is what a great would you question. Win? Well, what would you, you're two. You're picking between two shits. So which which is shitty? I choose Dodd. I choose Dodd. Dodd is winning anything ahead of Bayern. No, but Cavani, Cavani was brilliant at Napoli too. Like, yeah. Yeah, yes, he was. he was. Yes, he was. He was. Napoli. He was. But what, what did they win? But you know, this is actually a tough one. Who had see? No, off, it's not. No, no, it's Cavani. Offset, see, it's Cavani. But if you peel it and so forth, was Cavani part of the Copa America in 2011? Oh, oh. I don't know if he was. Okay, fair enough. Okay, no. Uruguay. If you're gonna use Uruguay tax, fair enough. Then. Um. Oh yeah, Alps. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about Gabon. Really, is it? Ricardo, <laughs> can you can you read this dub? Yeah, I don't know why. This is not the first time your cat's hitting on me, man. Like I, I don't know what's going on, man. Ricardo, can you read this dub, please? Ricardo is looking. <sighs> Shout out to 
LG, LGBTQ, whatever the hell, plus in that. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 relax. Don't, don't start disrespecting that. Look, remember, they, they rule the world now. So it, looks, it looks good, though, right? It looks good. Wait, is that the IX Jamaican jersey? Uh, Bob Marley tribute. Bob Marley. Bob Marley tribute. tribute. Bob Marley's overrated, man. Sizzler's better. Stop, oh my! Stop right, it! So, it looks it. clean, though. It looks clean. Oh no, no, no! You know, you know that that kid is nice, though. That kid is nice. All right, guys. Last topic before we get out of here, man. Um. So. Oh, wow. Quick question: Did he? Did does Manny deserve to be named African Player of the Year ahead of Salah? So it was Salah, Mendy, and um, Manny. Mendy, uh, cool. He did well, but now, did he deserve to go ahead of Salah? So Salah, um, double figures and goals and assists for Liverpool, but didn't do anything in the finals. Mane, not the greatest first half of the season. Did better at the Afcon, but won Afcon and also helped his country qualify for the World Cup. But guys say that, bro, if you look at the stats, Salah had a better season than Mane. So why should Mane win? But other and other people were like, that's all well and good, but. Mane, when it came to um, African situations, came up tops over Salah. Vero, what are you saying, man? Um, I hate this. Let's look at the stats and make a decision. You don't. If it was that easy, you would put the sheet of paper down, <laughs> go across goals, assists, <laughs> and then make the decision. That's not how you determine the effectiveness of a player. We're talking about one being the king of Egypt. We're talking about another man being the king of Africa. Egypt is in Africa. Mm. Africa is greater than Egypt. The king of Africa deserves the trophy. Mane's season, I'm, I'm not going to talk about pure numbers. Mane's season in terms of leadership, in terms of being the focal point, in terms of bringing winning to, to his country. They have has first been ever that. major title in the entire history. First ever, and in and also in, in terms of consistency, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna poo poo. I'm not gonna dismiss even qualifying for the World Cup. That's mm. that's a that's big. That's so, um, I it is a good thing I didn't get a vote because it'd be a waste of time. I just give a vote. <laughs> but there's there should have been no question when when you look at what the entire season encompassed. And I'm not gonna be a stat merchant. I'm not gonna look at what he did in the EPL and goals and assists. And he was, one was good in the first half. One was good in the second half. No, mm. the way teams pl game plan against players uh, against teams, Mane is, is key to that. Sometimes you have to pick your poison. Which one are we, are we going to accept scoring or being a threat? Mm. Now nah, let's take Mane away. Cause that spark that he can do is more dangerous than giving or agreeing that Sané is going to, I mean, Salah is going to get his one or two. You know what I mean? So let Salah do his thing, but we're going to make sure we don't have both of them going off. Mane, in my opinion, I don't get a vote. I know football, despite all you football snobs that hear my accent and think I don't. Mane <laughs> is the guy and deserved it this year. Salah had a good season. No disrespect to him. But if we're weighing the two, Mm. For weighing the two and what they delivered, it's not a question. You don't know ball if you're questioning that. It's money. But actually, no, before I go to record, you know what I really hate? Which is why, like, one thing I'm happy with this channel is how people are like accent snobs. Because I think there's this kind of notion that unless you have like a posh English accent, then that's when you really know about football and so forth. But people forget that this is a global sport, you know. And even as well, as again, I don't like, I have a, people just don't know where, where the heck my accents comes from, you know, but I hate the whole idea of like, okay, once you don't hear the American accents that, oh, these guys, they don't know about anything. Sports is still sports, you know, sports is still sports and competition is still competition. So you can still apply the general rule of thumb of sports to anything, whether it's tennis, table tennis, basketball, athletics, football, and so forth. So I just hate that notion of once it's an english voice they know what they're talking about no it's like no this is this is the global sport the sports belongs to everyone man so get the hell out of here ricardo talk to me man uh yeah no i think it's a deserved award for money i don't think i don't think it's much of a discussion however i do want to push back on the idea that money season I, his, my, his accomplishments came from the international level i'll give him credit for the international stuff he won the African Cup of Nations, the World Cup qualifier. Brilliant. He deserves it. He could deserve that based on that alone, 
right? The, on the club level, it, when you compare Salah and Mane, you could almost give them the same rating. And the reason I say that is because when one was great, the other one was garbage. When Salah was busting ass in the first half of the season, Mane wasn't there. When Salah's nudes got leaked, Mane stepped up. So it's kind of like, <laughs> bro, it, it, that's what happened. Man. I don't make the rules. <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> so it's kind of like, I, I, I get it. It's us football fans we only remember as far as like like bro like four weeks ago so money looks a lot better in that regard right i i noticed that a lot of people i get it salah is the face of liverpool not denying that i remember when everybody was saying how good is this liverpool team really they played three finals didn't score in any of them but we all which kind of it's a bit contradicting because money is on the same team we also said that Mane is the bigger game player, clutch, more clutch than Salah, but they scored zero goals in those three finals. I'm just saying that I'm not saying Mane didn't have a great season. I would take his season over Salah because I won something for my national team, right? But I think we are pushing Mane's season a lot better than what it actually really was. So, I, I, like, I, look, don't get me wrong. I, I, yeah. I like Mane and I like Salah. Like I, I've noticed that there's a lot more hate towards Salah, even though I, honestly I don't really understand why there's so much hate. I try not to just jump on the hate unless the player probably deserves it, but even then it's still a big cringe. But like let's be honest, like if I'm thinking but, 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 apart but, but, from so, 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 fish puns, right? fish no, puns. I just want to say, like, apart from the international stuff, because that's non negotiable, like mm. Mane won that side on the club level, who has actually had more in this season alone, bigger moments. Cause honestly, I can't think of a game this season where I'm saying, yo, that was the game. That was Mane's game of the season. But when I look at Salah, I'm like, bro, that game against Manchester United, that's like a that's a Premier League classic for an individual player. Mm. You don't just well, against, okay, his two goals against Man City. Or that too, because that goal was insane. Yeah. So yeah. so I'm like so hey, normal, but I think it's it's one of those things that we're like if I'm being real, I think of, see, and this is where it's almost very harsh. So let's we look at Salah's moments, Liverpool, Man City. What did it lead to? So now that seems painful because we have to just judge the individual because all those moments for what? You didn't really get any cheddar at the end of the path. The thing with Mane is, those performances for Senegal, it led to something tangible. It led to something concrete. So I just feel like if, as much as we have to admire what Salah did, which is amazing to be double figures in goals and assists and quality real assists, not just this crappy assist, it was all for so Boy Vato's team saying what's up at the end of the day. Uh, but are we, are, are we saying that the only... But I feel like we're leaning towards the point that Mane really only won this award because of what happened on the international level. Because if you remove the international play, which is, to me, what clinched it, mm. how much no, 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 how no, much no, was no, Mane's no, performance better? No, but, but, but also, you have to remember that Mane did... Literally, it was after AFCON, Mane really improved. Yeah, no, for sure. And then for he sure. actually really... And then, and then he saw how he, important he was for Liverpool. No, no for so, sure. But did he... In the time that he improved from post-AFCON mm -hmm. or qualifiers, mm -hmm. was it as good as the top... As Salah started the season? But, but this, no, this but is where I'm going to... It's a combination. So I'll come to you, but it's a combination, though. So I think, no, but you're combining how much better he was both in the UCL and the league after AFCON, plus what he did in the AFCON. Mm -hmm. All Salah is giving you is um, for Liverpool. And you have to keep in mind that this may be right or wrong. This is an African award. So if it's an African award, you will be more biased on what do you well, do yeah, that's with fair. an African award. But, but that's what I'm saying. It's like I feel like he clinched this award on the basis of AFCON, which is fine because it is an African award. Mm. Now, but I'm saying on the club level, what I'm asking is, was Mane's season really that much better than it's, we are perceiving it? I personally okay. don't think it is, but your it was don't a matter solid here, Ricardo. Your, your, so. feelings, your feelings don't matter here. You, you, your feelings about Mane's second half, first half, Salah, this is, this is what I'm going to say. 
Salah's first half of the season, yeah, man was cooking. Man was doing his thing. But there's less urgency, less tension, less weight on the wins on the second half of the season. And when Salah touched African soil, when Mane touched African soil, it was a Space Jam thing. Mane came back and still had his powers. Salah was, he couldn't, couldn't find it. Now, my your point to one did one thing the first half, one did one thing the second half. Mane coming back on the second half with the end with the closing out the season with the importance of the pursuit of their quad that they were trying to do with the finals that came up not only for the Caribou Cup but the FA Cup against Manchester City it was Mane that had the brace it was Mane that put pressure on well put pressure to actually continue to pursue this quad with the 3-2 win against us and and also when we look at the end of the year in their pursuit to close out the season and, and go far within Champions League, if you're going to argue neither of them really played to the level, okay, that's fair. But when it came to, when it came time to play, Mane was there. Liverpool fans will tell you, Salah wasn't quite the guy he was in the second half of the season. Was that no, because... he definitely wasn't. Yeah, and was that because he... <laughs> He put out, he wrote a check he couldn't cash saying, I want and, and, and Real Madrid. Biscuits, you know, yeah. <laughs> was, no. was that the case? Was it just, was no, he just not ready for saying, what I, I get, look, the, the AFCON thing is non-negotiable is what mm. I'm saying. Non mm. That's not for discussion. I personally think that is what clinched it for him. Because there had it been a year where AFCON had, did not take place, I think you can have a real conversation about who had a better season. Because... We are putting way too much emphasis on what happens at the end of the season, but what happens in the beginning of the season sets you up to be part of the end of the season. You can't just miraculously end up second place, one no, point no, behind no, at the no, end no, of the no, season. No, no, it's true. Here's the thing. No, it's like in the words of what's it called? Um, I think it's a Lester Freeman from The Wire. All the pieces matter. Everything matters. Every, everything matters and everything. Everything, because everything all comes to what you do in the whole season. But... If you had to choose, there's extra waiting when palms get sweaty and oh, there's higher sure. higher pressure. Again, for guys who watch the NBA and, and, and so forth, first, second quarter, third quarter, boom, boom, everyone is scoring. That last two minutes in the fourth quarter where the game is tied or it's a two-point differential, the ball feels a lot heavier. No, guys, for sure. And, and I think a lot more because your heart is now beating, especially in the final, your heart is now beating. So therefore, it's much more difficult. So those guys who can score and take that three points in that fourth quarter in the one minute, you, you no, give them I, a lot I, more credit I, than the guy in the I first quarter. So, so for football, I, it's like when the pressure is highest and it now becomes real, what are you now going to do? No, I, I definitely understand what you are saying. But my point still stands that money not even mind Liverpool as a whole doesn't get the opportunity to be in those positions had it not been Salah quite literally being the best player there was a conversation the first three months of the season that is Salah the best player in the world that's a level that not many players ever reach Mane that second half of the season as good as he was nobody was saying that it was it was quite obvious that Benzema was clearly still the best and Mbappe was having a great season as well however even if we, like, I feel like, in a sense, we are just picking, like mm. nitpicking, whatever, right? But even if we are going to do that, let's look at the Champions League final. I personally believe, and I don't think how anybody can argue this, had it been another keeper, Salah has two goals in the second half. Because some of those saves Courtois made were freaking insane. And, and also, Mane has, Mane has a goal as well. Because, right. see, I, sure. I, I, I thought that, that hit the butt. He saved it. Kutsa saved, saved, saved that. He, he no, pushed for sure. his into the post. For sure. And, but I'm saying which, the second Which moment half... happened first? Did, did Mane's... No. Did Mane's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mane's happened no, no, first. For, yeah, happened first. Mane's happened first. But my point is, is that, yeah, he gets you one goal. Madrid still score. I mean, it's all hypothetical at the end of the day. But mm. the second half, Salah was quite clearly the better player. First half, you could argue who really was the better player. But I think in that game, I think from first to 90th minute... Not that they were exceptional, anyways, but who actually show up more was actually Salah. I hear that. But, 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 I hear that. So, sorry, I mean, quick, quick, I mean, you are right, which is why I say like there's face value and then there's context. Face value, even if I'm not a numbers guy, 
that whenever you do double figures in goals and assists, and I see your assists, and your assists aren't just simple assists, you are actually putting guys in goal scoring positions. I'm like, you've had an amazing season. So even if you may have had basketballs and, and so forth to do that and to do that in the Premier League, one of the toughest leagues in the world, that is impressive. So Salah had an outstanding season. You had an amazing season. But for me, whenever I talk for football, I have to have context. I never talk about football on Facebook. There's context. You have to go into detail and look at this three three dimensionally. So I say, cool, face value. That's great. So now let me now look at this in much more detail. So I'm looking at the big games, the key games, the crucial games, the finals. What are you doing when those things fully matter? So because it's almost like like we didn't have boxing judges. There's some judges that just am um, judged based on how many times the guy hits the other guy. And the guy that judge you based on who is who is busier. I don't care how many times you hit the dude, he was a lot more busy. I'm going to credit that. So it's about perspective. So if I'm a judge, I'm judging on, okay, I'll have the stats there, but I'm looking at the big games, the tougher games, the key moments, and those games that matter more against tougher opponents, how well did you play? And for me, I'm like, what rests on me more is what Manny did in that kind of the season combined with what he did for Senegal, I think it's just tips it over to him. Really? Yeah, so, yeah. But, 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 but that's, it's taking nothing away from what Salah did that season, but I just yeah. feel that. I would, I would have to say it, it was mainly the AFCON and the World Cup qualification. That yeah, I mean, for man, him. it's like, yeah. that's because, what it's because like. like I said, we, we always have this narrative on this channel that Mane is the better, bigger game player, the more clutch player. But mm. the facts are the facts. Liverpool in three finals haven't scored. So where was that clutchness? What was that big game player for Mane? I think it's pretty obvious that the AFCON clinched it for him. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I've heard the criticism from, from many Liverpool fans, even because, funny enough, Liverpool fans will actually pick which player they're actually going to be promoting. And I've heard the pros and cons. But you can't, you can't dismiss, like, obviously, whether Mane moved from left wing to center because of lack of effective, effectiveness or whatever you want to argue – but the reason why he had to move to center is because obviously whoever was at center wasn't effective either. So yeah. Mane's versatility to go from there, from left wing to center, is is something to actually acknowledge to keep the flow of, the, of their club moving. Because let's all be real, Salah is not going anywhere. Effectiveness or not, he is on that right side. So there's no let's kind of switch you to the left. There's no let's bring you center. No. He is actually stuck based off of his skill set to be there. So um, I, I hear I hear what you guys are, are running at. The fun, the irony is because it is an African award. There's no way we're only going to accept the English Premier League performance. You know what I mean? No, of course, so, of no way. I just so, think, but I, I mean, to the thing is that when I'm looking at it too, because I remember when obviously this past Afcon was the first Afcon I've mm. ever watched, right? And when I asked people, like, who are some of the favorites, I had people telling me Senegal was up there. And nobody nobody said Egypt. Egypt was past it. So it's kind of like, are we selling, are we kind of taking what Salah in Egypt did for granted and what Salah had to work with? But then my response to you is, is this. Who has won the Afcon the most times in history? Yeah, it's but that Egypt. Has not, but that no, has no, nothing no, 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 true. But when you're coming in, so it's it's a mentality psychological thing. Like the keeper, I think El Hadari was part of that team that won three Afcons in a row. So but when you're just a, but he's a keeper. No, 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 no. But, but my so thing though is that Ricardo, you must know this one. You know, but when you're in an environment where your team has won it the, the most, you have a different psychology. Even look at Brazil as well. These guys come into that World Cup. You know that even if none of us have won the World Cup, there is just that psychology of like, okay, we know what guys have done before us. So even if this group of Egyptians have never won an Afcon, there is this expectation. And also keep in mind, this most of this group got to the final a few years ago, but lost yes, to Cameroon. A, a, yes, AJ. And didn't the match go to PKs? The match won the final. No, 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 no. Yeah, they, they, lost sure. two, one. they lost 2 1. They lost 2 1 in the but, final. What, what I'm saying is that. Yes, what you're saying is true. When you wear particular uniforms, there's a weight, there's a pressure, there's a belief in it, right? I'm not denying that. However, at the end of the day, when you judge them based on the quality of their squads, there's no way you could tell me when you compare 
Egypt squad to their mm. previous squads. You cannot tell me if you just remove Salah because Salah is one player and he's clearly mm. the most talented player Egypt has probably ever had. But when you compare the squads, their previous generations have been better because they have been far more successful consecutive tournaments. Uh, Senegal, on the other hand, had one of the best squads in the tournament. Let's not. Let's no, no, not... no, 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 but Ricardo, come on. Like, never give me that. 2006 World, World Cup. That Brazil squad was disgusting. It was, it yeah, was, it was Brazil, downright disrespectful. But it's, but it's Brazil. We're not talking, we can't compare Brazil and Senegal. Like, that's. No, 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 no. But, but, the, but the point I'm making is that you can have amazing talents. But they cannot fall through. Talents doesn't mean anything. It's about what you do and how you execute in the tournament. Hold on. That's how you execute in the, in the tournament. And when you look at the, the game, though, you see, this way you now have to add context. So Egypt's plan was, let's get to penalties. Because Egypt had Because they were two the guys. inferior team. And they, that's not the only game they played that particular way. No, 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 but, but what I'm saying to you is that you have to give Senegal kudos. First of all, your country has never won a major trophy. Oh, before. for sure. I'm not taking anything so, away no, 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 from but, but wait, So, never won a major trophy before. That's the first thing. Egypt had a penalty taker who I think he'd never missed a penalty in like two or three years or something. Like, the other guys who are, these are penalty experts. And so, going into the shootout, if you were a betting person, you bet on Egypt. Because they had, I think they'd already won two penalty shootouts and they have guys who are penalty experts. Whereas in Senegal, Mane had already missed a penalty during the game. He's a known and um, bad penalty taker, and Mendy is known to be a bad keeper at saving penalties. <laughs> so everything was counted against Senegal in that sh shootout. So, but they managed I, to get it done. So I get to... it. I get it. I get what you're saying. That obviously there are better penalty takers, but at the end of the day, you, what happens in the past doesn't necessarily reflect what the outcome is going to be in the future. Because at the end of the day, that is a AFCON final, a continental final, in your country's online. Nobody, no player is stepping up to the plate and being like, I'm a good penalty taker. Because you could easily just mess it up as confident as you are, or the goalkeeper does a crazy save. So I'm think so what I'm saying is in that moment, it doesn't matter whether or not you're a great penalty taker or not, it's whether or not you can put it in the back of the net. And to be fair, it's like the fact that we have to say that Egypt played that way. And we knew they were playing that way because it wasn't the, they didn't just do this for Senegal. They did this for the team they played in semis, forget who it was, because um, they did the exact same thing. And so they quite literally relied on penalties and a game of chance to win this trophy. Whereas Senegal, to be fair, based on what I've seen on Senegal, they kind of underperformed in that final, at least for me. Based yeah, on yeah. So it's kind of like, yeah, the nerves might have got to them. Oh, for sure. Or, for sure. or defensively, I think you can't take away that uh, Egypt was actually good defensively. Offensively, mm -hmm. they lacked, they didn't take their chances, yada, yada, yada. But the fact that Egypt stayed, played that particular way to get to, to win or advance, I think it kind of tells you that Senegal, despite all the inexperience they had, they were quite clearly the better, more talented, more powerful team. No, no, but, 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 but you know what, what's what ends this? Is laser attacks or no laser laser attacks? Salah sends his um, penalty to well, space. Well, probably, yeah, probably. So, 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 basically, so basically, if you say, Man, it's close, 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 close. Houston, Houston, we have liftoff. We have liftoff. So that's like, okay, like that, come on, that ends it. You know, like once you, you miss the penalty that stops your country from going to the World Cup and the other dude scores the penalty that sends him there, then it's like, all right, like it's it's all that she, she wrote to me, you know. Um, so are, are, are we going to speak on uh, Sir Charles Darwin Nunes? I don't think we, we covered it. Oh my gosh, that's what, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Let me let me <laughs> <laughs> let me take this thing because oh, I totally forgot, but let me take this two dogs of them. We'll talk about that. Um, Wingarella says, Cocaine Gallagher is better than Kai Havertz. Winger, um, wing, have some shame, have some shame. Hell no, <laughs> hell no. <King> Gallagher. <laughs> Talent FC. All I remember is Salah's missed penalty versus Leicester. Hashtag three points. Did he miss a penalty against Leicester? I don't remember to be honest. Yeah, I remember that. Um, Talent FC again says, Stop this BS in Ballon d'Or awards about stats. This should be. This would be the year of the MVP. Example, in 2010, Snyder or Melito, they turned up and won it all, like Dini and Zizou. Yeah, for me, as I said again, 
I don't believe in this stuff about um, points, stats, and all that kind of crap, man. That, 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 that's nonsense for me, man. All right, so final thing. Thank you for reminding me, um, Ricardo, bro. Thank you, bro. Um, let's talk about Charles. Um, your boy, Charles, Charles Darwin. I just want to come first to Vito with this, though. Here's the thing, Vito. I think I wanna, we're going to have to have a real discussion here. I'm happy for Nunes. I never like to see a guy get totally beat up, abused, and just vilified. Only if it's Timo Werner. Timo Werner is the only guy who I accept doing that. And actually, I'm the guy leading the, the, the charge of his abuse. So I'm happy that he got his, his, his four goals preseason just to, for him to feel confident. Because see, so here's my thing, though. What if we have a scenario where Nunes scores more goals than Haaland? Because Haaland is coming in with he's the next big thing. They would have put him in the same category as Mbappe. He's, people have said that he's going to break Cristiano Ronaldo's UCL record. He's going to be the next great striker. Nunes was YouTube comps and forever. The amount of DMs I received, I literally got spammed in my DMs with um, Nunes' misses and one yard misses and so forth. So this guy has been insulted and abused. So if we have a situation where Nunes outscores Haaland, Vato, that's bad. Can you admit that that would be real bad? Vato, come on, don't. Eh, no, come on, that would be real bad. Nunez, so you want me to envision a in the multiverse? You want me to yes. envision a reality where Nunez scores more than Holland? Okay, that's we're talking slick. That's no, no, I'm, at, oh, I'm oh, asking. Oh, the oh, no, no, no. Okay, so that's based on your voices back with the arrogance. <laughs> so, so you're saying that there's there's no chance in hell where you could even be on your whole Doctor Strange type of thing of where you could even imagine like in universe 16234 where this bomb ass loser piece of crap from Uruguay outscores the Norwegian Thor. I am trying to I'm trying to picture that reality and right now I have a hard time because of the confidence that I have in my in my player in Holland. I can only go off of what I've seen him do in the leagues that he's played in and what he's done in the Champions League when he's played. There's no refuting it. Like what he's been able to deliver goal-wise in the Champions League, we all have to hold our hands up and say fair play. Now we need to see him do it at City. Ch odds are based off of what we've seen, chances created, goals that we've been able to do should bode well but i haven't seen him play yet i haven't even i haven't seen him wear the city jersey and play that's mm -hmm. that's what i'm hoping to see in in this bayern preseason game but i've also seen a few preseason games for nunez and i know he came through with these four i'm not taking i'm i know he came through with these four he's answered a few of these haters he actually he actually squashed a lot of these, um, a lot of these youngsters that were ready to create these comps for for the last game, but they have to be like good comps, not fail comps. Um, this may not be popular. This may not be consistent among City fans, but Holland is for Champions League. Holland is to prepare himself within the league, but it's for him to deliver in Champions League. For him sense. to deliver there. That makes so, sense. So from a goal standpoint, if you guys are going to hold him to all competitions, Nunez having more, that might be a possibility. But where I want Holland to deliver is on those is with those Champions League goals. That's where I want him to cook. Let's com let's compare. I'm I'm okay to compare the two with on, Champions on, League on goals. On Nunez though, should Liverpool still be worried that this guy may not be it and this guy may be a downgrade on Mane or? Do you feel that, all right, he may not look great, he's going to score goals. He'll put the ball in the back of the net. Or are you still worried about his lack of football fundamentals could actually be a real hindrance in trying to get those goals? I, like everyone, love the failed comps. I love them. <laughs> I, I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and say that I don't think he, I don't think it's no longer in him to mess, the, mess up the way he has. Because He's been cumbersome. He's the fail comms didn't just start with him coming to Liverpool, right? But there's a reason why Liverpool spent so big to get him. There's a reason wait, why. Wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, bro, 
tell me your email. I mean, money is very tight at the moment and everything. There's, you know, lost, you know, living crisis. I might want to take that bet. <laughs> I think, I think it's in him. I mean, the, like I said, the, the, his, his deficiencies, his lack of skill, possibly that's nothing new. I think Klopp's going to get the most out of him. They're, that's the why they spent big for him. They they see a vision. They have a vision for him, so he'll improve. But to go as far as to to say that he's automatically going to perform goal wise better than Holland, I don't think so. But if you want to judge both players coming into this league, where they start and where they end up, my bets on Holland being the more polished when it's all said and done. Um, and season one, I'm not taking any bets unless we're talking Champions League because that's what I think he's brought it, brought in for. S- players at City, huge learning curve. You were playing, you were just doing math. You're coming to City and you're doing calculus. You were just doing science. You're coming to City. And you're now doing physics. There's there's a year to get acclimated and get ready. Man's gonna properly cook next season. So then I'll take on all these bets about who's going to have most goals between Nunes and Holland. But this year, I'm looking at Champions League goals. That's where he needs to cook. Ricardo, what do you say? Respectfully, I disagree. I think... I want, it's not just Vader, because I've heard it from several other people as well, that they're bringing X player for one particular competition. I think that type of idea, I think you, people who think, like City fans who think that way, are kind of a slightly bit insecure that Holland may not kick off as they as they were once confident. No, but like Vader, just listen, listen, listen. I'm listening. That's why I didn't say word, but no, I'm so, going to react. Yeah, bro, I'm going to react. You're having, you're gay. You're, you're, it's like, yeah, you know, the crack is kicking in. The contact crack is kicking in. <laughs> My thing is, is that look, I can see from the outside. I'm not, I'm not a city fan. I appreciate them as a club, but my thing is, is that although I don't believe Holland and Mbappe are on the same level in terms of footballing ability, right? When it comes to effectiveness and output, and output, Holland c- competes. He competes with Mbappe, right? And we have pushed this narrative that Holland and Mbappe they are the future, and I don't think anybody can disagree with that. They are clearly one A and one B. Although some may say one and two, I think Mbappe is one, Holland's two, but I think that's just based on the talent. Mbappe has shown more. But being number two, bro, it isn't a bad thing, right? City get, you would say, on technicality, their first superstar in terms of signing him. Holland going to Man City when Real Madrid, maybe you could argue Barcelona, I don't know, were chasing him. It shows you the quality of player that they were trying to compete for or trying to acquire. Because when you get Holland, it t- he should take your club to the next level, right? And the next level doesn't just depend on one competition. It's establishing a dominance. So you can't be like, I'll judge him based on only what he does on one particular competition. Because if that one competition doesn't go to plan, then is his season automatically a failure? Or if he scores well in the Champions League, and he fails in the Premier League, how do you look at that season? When you have a player of Holland's caliber, you have to take the entire season as a whole. And we actually had Guardiola as his own man, your own manager say that when I was brought to the club, it wasn't for the Champions League. So you, as, although that's bullshit in my opinion, because it's the fans and the people that put the pressure on you, you can't just be like... Well, I hope he only does good in the Champions League. I don't care what he does in the Premier League. What Man City is doing in the Premier League is a monopoly. Like, you can't just overlook that. They, Holland's reputation depends on him sustaining that level of dominance for Man City in the Premier League. No, no. And, and also as well, see, Vaito, you should know your fan base better than us. Yeah. Let's keep it real. Most Man City fans, now not all, but a lot of Man City fans, specifically the ones in Manchester, they care more about the dominance in the Premier League than the Champions League because of how much they hate Man United. I so agree. every Premier League win is a chance of getting one over their first rivals, Man United. So for a Haaland coming in, bro, we need you to score more goals than any 
United player in history. We need you to go crazy in the Premier League. We need you to break the Premier League goal scoring record so we can even use that stick to beat um, United to back with it again. So they that's are literally, why they're I, literally banking on him to be the best player in the world. Like that's the potential yeah. Holland has. So for, you can't just be the best player in the world balling in one competition. This that's is the this, this is where this is where our school system's failing us because it's up it's about comprehension. I told you guys, year one, he's going from learning math to now learning calculus. So if we're judging him on year one, that's why I'm saying my focus year one is what he does for the Champions League. Because you guys are quick to tell me we're we're Premier League merchants. Or, or we, we, what have, what have we done? We've made the Premier League a farmers league, like that's not a little, no longer a focus anymore. What we want is obviously continued success in the EPL, one hundred percent. We, we want that three peat, but we've shown that we can win it without Holland. What I'm saying is, the emphasis here for him to to take us to that next level that as you're talking about is what's been eluding us. And that's been the Champions League. So that's where the emphasis for me is going to be. Uh, is he, it's, it's not like no goals in the EPL and just delivering the Champions League. That's not what I'm saying. He's still going to cook. He's still going to do his thing. But where I really want to see him do his thing is in the ch is in the Champions League year one. Year two, which we've all seen under Pep, for Pep coming to City first year, not much happened. Year two, Centurions. Crushing records. No, for sure. Okay. I'm just saying with comparison to Nunes, because the topic is about comparison mm. to Nunes. Yes. I don't think this is supposed to be a debate. Like, I think Holland is supposed to put this guy in a spliff in the Premier League. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but the, the, but the thing, thing is, is... This is, what, this is why I'm worried. Though, so sorry, but just quickly, is that... Because I've seen this kind of story play out, which is why... I get you when I say the championship, but I want the, both of these guys to go head to head because it's going to be a comparison. Because my thing is, I think that because it's the, it's this is the same danger that's PSG do where okay, I'm saving myself for this competition. But what's how you really do well in the Champions League is you get that match chapters in the Premier League to now say what's up. So what I need yeah. to happen is for Nunes, the way the story is supposed to go is of course Haaland will put him in a split as Spoken as Ricardo says. But how I see the story play out is. The guy that gets insulted, abused, memes and everything, he'll probably turn out to actually surprise a lot of people. So in the event that Nunes somehow, through his um, jagged edge, Timberland boots, um, <laughs> step over style, gets like 25, 30 goals or something, and is this huge, massive goal scorer, and he scores more than Haaland, it will well, be a flex. But, but, but AJ, and sorry. Fitzel, you see it or not, if was... Nunes scores more than Haaland, bro, I'm sorry, we're no, having but, a dialogue. But, but, no, well, yes, but I, it's more the fact that in Man City, you have a nine now, so he should be your output player. So he's going to be the most, like, he's the biggest beneficiary of this team. Are we, why are we ignoring at the fact that Nunes is not going to be Liverpool's primary goal scorer? Like, Salah's still on the yeah, team. Yeah, Salah's still there, yeah. So, no, but, Salah so, yeah, should ideally, yeah, I'd, Salah should ideally outscore uh, probably everybody really like he should be the Premier League Golden Boot winner next season if not Holland doesn't go insane. However, the fact that we're that's even a point should suggest that this is not a debate at all. But this this is the, this is what I'm getting in, and I kind of said it a little earlier. I've only seen one preseason game, and Holland didn't even play. City and everyone trolled the world because everyone stayed up late to want to watch a preseason game, and Holland didn't even touch the pitch. And people were waiting to see him to get subbed on. Never touched the pitch. But I want to see him in the preseason game and see what we do. But if Nunez is outscoring Holland, that means he is outscoring Salah. Because where are these goals coming from, right? Where are all these goals coming from? The reason why I'm a little hesitant to do a head-to-head -head challenge year one for these players is because we've shown, City has shown to distrib distribute goals amongst more than one player. It, even even with Aguero, we had many players scoring. We scored by committee. That Centurion season, scoring 100 points and the number of goals that we that we scored, it was still distributed amongst many of the squad. That will change. Don't get me wrong. That's going to change because I believe 
the players at City are going to want to feed Holland. They're going to want him to go like they they want the hype around him to to pay off. They're going to be feeding him and looking for him. But I haven't seen a game yet. I haven't seen a game yet. My emphasis again, my what I want is a difference with regards to Champions League. He's still going to cook in the EPL, but I can't I can't say for sure yet. So I can't say for say, sure yet. I mean, Aguero and Holland are two different strikers, but nonetheless, they're goal scorers. But I just don't want to see, for your sake, because I care about you. <laughs> I, I don't want to see a, a, a situation where you give them a pass, some sort of a pass for the Premier League, and then Champions League doesn't go as planned because, like you said, year one, year one, any player doesn't always go as planned, yeah. right? So that, especially I mean, at City, though. Especially at City. Yeah, because of a particular system, but. If there's too much emphasis on the Champions League and that doesn't hit, and then the Premier League doesn't hit, man's looking a little bit funny. You have to admit. Here's a here. Hear me out. There's so many different levels within the EPL. I think Holland's going to get his goals. The question <laughs> is, is he getting his goals against the top six? More importantly, though, I also want to see is he getting his goals. In the Champions League, and he, there's no avoiding it because not only do we want more success within that competition, but everyone's eyes on what he's already done in the Champions League will be putting that focus on him. So I want that to I want that to continue. Um, if they go, if they both battle it out and happen to be fifteen around fifteen goals in the EPL, and it's going back and forth, it's going back and forth, and Maybe one goal or whatever difference. Whatever, I'll take the banter. But I don't see Nunez going for 20. That's that's an incredible season for Benny. Um, Salah's kind of been around that number recently. Where where the goals really going to come from? I don't I don't know with regards to Liverpool. We're going to put an emphasis on Holland. Let's see where it nets out. Him scoring more, I don't so, know. So you... but, but judge him if you're going to judge them. It's gonna be the Champions League. That's where that's where I'm looking at things. So, but actually, this no, no, is my no, no. thing. Too. This is my so, thing. So, too. Cool, sorry, real quick. But what I will I will admit though that when he bought Haaland, the idea was Champions League. We need someone just to put that ball in that bloody net. Yeah. We had all these opportunities. We should have put man. We should have put Real Madrid away in the in the first leg, and in the second leg, Sterling misses from one year that. Maybe we just need a guy who. He can put the ball wait, in wait, that net. Who, who, who missed from one yard out? Ricardo. Ricardo. <laughs> okay, no, but what I was going to say is... Yeah, uh, AJ, you better stop bringing that point up now that he's your player. Stop bringing that up. <laughs> what point? I, I, I never said anything. <laughs> yeah. like, no, uh, amnesia, I was, amnesia. What I was going to say is that's, that the City, if we're being honest, they should have already won the Champions League, or at least they had a very good opportunity to win the Champions League, whether it had been the... Th- final against Chelsea or even this past season like it took uh, a crazy situation for them not to go to the final so that you could you could actually say that they should have won by now so now so the fact that you were already favorites like for the past like what two three years and still haven't been able to win you get Holland like bro there's quite like we're, we're always gonna little... be favorites we're always gonna no be no favorites. but that's the unfortunate fact but I'm saying the fact that you got one of the most well, you got the most coveted number nine in world football. Like, there's quite literally no excuse. As much as say you get eliminated by whatever team, right? Whether whether it be by some crazy circumstance like against Real Madrid or you just got bested, you can't be like there's literally no excuse to fall back on. So it's kind of like Man City have put themselves in a position where you have to win. It doesn't matter how much numbers this guy puts up. If you don't win, it's a massive failure. Uh, I, before we have that conversation, all things require context, right? I the reason why I'm a little I'm calmer with regards to Champions League expectations is because I'll be the first to tell you what happened in those two minutes against Real Madrid. Un, unimaginable. Could not have envisioned it at all. I kid you not, I got an invite to go on a stream around the 75th minute or whatever, and I was amped. I was like, yo, I'm ready to talk my talk. And in two minutes, I'm now going on to a stream 
talking with regards to a loss that happened in that second leg. <laughs> um, but no, 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 but no, 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 they hit it. Something similar happened to me with France and Switzerland. The whole on <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. shameless, shameless. So the the yeah. expectations in the context with regards to the Champions League again to to label it as a failure if we don't do what happens. I need to see what happens. I need to see who goes down because I believe it's only an injury. Only in a key injury is what's going to prevent us from but going as far you, as we need to do. Is, is it does it concern you that Holland quite does have an injury record? Nah, nah. The re the reason why the reason why we've all we've all been young. You're probably the youngest of all of us. Growing pains, growing pains is what's kind of kept him out. As well as this is legacy money that he's been preparing for and wanting to get. So to be on the cautious side while at Dort Dorton, um, yeah, and just being cautious before making that move, I don't put anything. I don't put anything on that. He's going to so, be so, well taken care of. But so before I take this job, how do you see Nunes, both of their seasons turning out? Like Nunes to begin with, how well do you think Nunes will do? Are we saying fifteen? Because you say that you say he. You, you say he doesn't touch 20. You say he gets less than 20 goals. That 20 will be a really good season because of Salah. I don't see how Nunez gets 20 goals. I really don't because Salah just tied for golden boot with, what, 21 or 22 goals or something and like that? And he doesn't really pass the ball that much. So, I, I, I ugh, You're stealing my thunder for future streams, <laughs> HH. But, yes, Salah has shown to be the creative one and to get goals. But man just got the big contract. He just got that extension contract. There's no way, there's no way that the the, the selfishness in terms of being a pure goal scorer goes away. He's going to get his, and yes, I don't think the creativity is going to remain there. But um, Nunes getting more than twenty, I, I, I don't see it. The comparisons between the two, it's going to happen day one. Oh, it has I, to. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's it, it happens now. It's, 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 yeah, now. and it's fantastic for the league. It's going to have to happen. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Again, no, no, that is no. you actually put my point in here. Social media. These kids, these younger guys, especially, look at social media. For sure, Nunes saw all of the memes and all of the abuse and so forth. 100 percent Because these younger players, you can't keep them off of social media. You can't see the older guys who are least maybe 30 and above. They could do something else. These guys who are like in the early twenties, mm -hmm. they grew up with the, with the social media, unlike us. Yeah. So for them, they have to be on there. So Holland, the media, the people, the expressions, the rants, every they will play into the comparison. So Holland, viewing social media, say, "Oh, there's going to be many goals." Oh, you know, people will, will do different kinds of funny memes to now come compare them. Yeah. Holland will be like, "Okay, it's on. I have to score more than this guy." Nunes will be like. Okay, now what if I score more than this freaking dude? Now the difficulty with Nunes is the Salah perspective. The thing with Haaland is, I don't think it's. Here's the funny thing about both of the, 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 these guys. Nunes, that's the worst YouTube comments I've ever seen. So I don't know why Pep <laughs> wants, 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 wants to buy him. From Pep's point of view, Haaland is not a Pep player. So I don't know how the heck Haaland, with how he plays fits into a pep system alvarez does alvarez is fits like a glove what pep wants to do Haaland doesn't so how will that work so that's yeah. what makes me interesting about these about these two but i just feel that whether they like it or not or whether Haaland likes it or not they will play into the comparison because social media will pressure them into saying who scored how many this weekend? Oh, he scored two. Hey, he scored uh, two. Honestly, oh, he scored three. honestly, if it even is a conversation, I think that's an Ellen Holland's book, in my opinion, because this shouldn't be a, a conversation. I don't think uh, Nunes, he'll get somewhere between maybe 10 to 13 goals. I think if oh, I'm going to. Oh, 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 Based on how both team plays, which player will have more difficulty getting goals. Based yes. on both of the systems and their role in that system, who will have more difficulty in getting goals based on how both teams play? I'll say, I'll say Nunes. I'll say Nunes, one, because his best quality is his goal scoring ability and he's not even the primary person for that. So but, I don't really understand that with Holland, bro, I'll be honest with you, Man City, 
with Man City, there is so much quality in that team that I, I'm convinced if these guys were to play a man down for a whole Premier League season, they will finish above the top half. They'll finish in the top half. That's how good these guys are. Okay. So if you just slide, like, I, I don't, I think Holland can be successful in the team that City's in without being a necessary fit. I'm expecting Holland to be competing for the Golden Boot. That's my expectation. What 100%. But, but my hesitancy is because of the quality of our club. When you have De Bruyne, when you have Silva, all showing, if, I don't know if you watched the preseason game, but all showing to be scoring threats, right? That's, that's the thing where I'm like, I don't know if, I don't know if Pep is going to design the system to actually look for Holland like seven out of 10 times. I don't know if that's going to be the vision of how we attack. Yeah, or if it, you know what I mean. So, yeah. but I see the I see the difference with with regards to Liverpool, especially with their fullback play and things coming so centralized with their with how they cross and 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 bring in play. Like th th it might be a, a match made in heaven with regards to Nunes being a focal point. I don't know if that's the case with regards to City. I just want to, I just want to see a preseason game, and I'll come out here with chest and tell you exactly what no, I. Although expect. I do agree with you that. Like Nunes has the potential to score a lot more than maybe we're giving him credit for. Mm -hmm. However, I think the volume of chances City produce, even though everybody can score outside of Holland, mm -hmm. Holland will still have sufficient amount of chances for him to compete. Oh, no, at no, the no, yeah, level. no, no, because I think it's a word because I'm like, yes, he's going to have so many chances based on just how creative all these guys are. But the thing though is, because of how Holland plays and how he operates, Will he work well and gel with how the team plays? I think Alvarez, because he's a much more skillful player, better on the ball, and is a lot more more mobile, will be able to connect well in footballing situations in that final third better than Haaland, who I think Haaland will need a lot more of an adjustment period than, let's say, a Julian Alvarez. And from Nunes's point of view, it's an interesting one. I think for Nunes, you're not Firmino. You're totally different from a Firmino. This is a guy who you're a classical number nine. So my thing, though, is when these guys attack, are you now going to be going all in to try to feed Nunes? Because the issue is Salah is going to try and get his, especially without big contracts. But, but you have two of the most lethal fullbacks in football. And Robertson and Trent, specifically Trent, are outstanding crossers. Trent's an outstanding crosser. And this guy, Nunes, is good in the air. He's a classical number nine. So if you're a classical number nine, what's your food and drink? It crosses it into the box. So I would actually, I feel that Nunes should probably have an easier time with the goals because I think that it will take, it is less work for Nunes to fit into what Liverpool do than for Haaland because that system that Pep has is, it's very particular. Because for me, I'm like, I don't understand the Haaland approaches because it doesn't fit into the system. I don't understand the Nunes approach because the guy is trash as a player. But if he can somehow just sort of restrict his trashness, that's just a striker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trent crosses, Robertson crosses, Tego can put in through balls, and Salah, even though he scores, Salah can also put in through balls as well. For Man City, for Haaland, you have to have a really good movement. You have to be mobile. You're going to receive that ball to, to feet. City don't just put crosses into the box and everything. Yes, I know KDB spams crosses, but for City, it's much more about the ball stays on the ground. It's those intricate passes. So you have to now give and go and be good in tight spaces. Yeah. So, And that's what I want to see. I, I, I want to see him in the system because I haven't had a chance to. And when 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 with Holland on the pitch, and when we talked about the when we talk about the quality now. I just want to see how Pep integrates it. I do think Pep now has a different challenge on his hand because he's shown how he's made the false nine work or even have the, the player that he wants in that position. But now with the Holland, it is different for what we've seen and it's different for what the team's seen. So it's a fantastic, to cha fantastic challenge to see what he actually designs. Now, I haven't geeked out. I haven't geeked out and looked at, goals that we scored for the season last year and who scored the goals who's left the club now to then do my 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 nerd my nerd mission 
and say, okay, here's where the goals are going to end up. Because I'm not quick to say, How Holland's now here, and I'm going to now add another 15 goals to what we did last season. You know, it doesn't quite work that way. So I'm, I'm going to do my homework, and I'm going to come back and, with chess, tell you exactly what's going to happen for the season. Oh, no, no, no. Look, because I think tomorrow is going to be – because, again, like I said, tomorrow we're not going to have to hang up because we have Bayern Man City yeah. and El, El Clasico as well. Is also tomorrow as well. So we have like two biggest, and also they're like, like, yeah, because you guys are, see, this is where you have to feel for us in the time zone because, um, Ban City, that's 12 a.m. That's what, 7 p.m. for you guys? Um, if it's 12, sorry. So, so, so over it's here? 12 a.m. BS. If it's 12 a.m. for you guys, that's then it. five years, five, five hours, seven. yeah, it's five hour difference, 7 p.m. And then you guys get the classic at what, like 9 p.m., 10 p.m., because that's 4 a.m. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be nine. Wow. I might not even watch it to be honest. I have stuff to do. So uh, okay, so let me. So last few things I will be out of here, man. Um, shout out to your whimsical thought, man. Oh no, Good that'd be to loving. See that'd be loving. Fellow, oh, you're from Toronto residents, cooking with hope. Speaking of cooking, when are you bring him back review with meals? Don't worry, those things will be the last month. Didn't your summer. didn't your kitchen explode? That's why you haven't continued the series. Uh, oh, oh no, no, I got a new um, oven. So I got, I got, I got, I got like a over, stove, so. like a new stove. Yeah, yeah a whole new, because easy, basically, like my landlord was like, look, it's, it's basically broke down. So a whole new modern stove. So it now looks good, good and sexy. But it's one of those modern ones where, like, when because you can shut on the, I have to shut on the cooker. But when I put in the, the cooker, it resets itself, and it's the oven is on automatic. So you have to now press the freaking manual button. I'm like, bro, who, oh. cooks, who, 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 who <laughs> cooks on automatic? The heck? Yeah, that's you know. Hot. I also say. Why are so many guys from Toronto? The amount of guys from Toronto, like on this channel and so forth, is just crazy. Like, I think Toronto, Toronto and the UK, we do have a connection because of the immigrants of the oh, East yeah. African and Caribbean. So I think there's a common like because of the fusion culture. Mm. There's a lot of similarities. Like even the slang is like very similar. I can watch UK YouTubers shows and I understand the lingo very mm. easily. Uh all right shout out to your boy alice man hh invite don husum on your show he's good all right i will man i will casey nunes goals were typical timo type at leipzig listen time will tell we shall see what it does we shall see mo ozo man city are so irrelevant i forgot they had how <sighs> okay look now how can they be irrelevant where unless you're an Aston fan bro come on <laughs> come on bro come on um casey See Jack ball this season. Pep tax over after. I will be looking now. I will give him the one year grace period. I will give you the one year grace period. So now I'll be looking to see if he balls. Talents FC. If CR thirty seven outscores Haaland, inducts the Bundesliga hashtag scam. Now that's if he is still in the Premier League. But if he's in the EPL and outscores Haaland, guys, it is got Naldo. Come on, it's got Naldo. Alps. Haaland plays tomorrow and El Clasico. So it's Haaland definitely playing tomorrow. Tune in. Hey, hey man, if Holland Tune plays in. tomorrow and he, he with a better team and doesn't baptize Bayern Munich for all the beatings he took the last few <laughs> years, bro, a Bayern just <laughs> might just Shout, shout your boy Ellen. <laughs> Keep an eye on Cavalio. Maybe a wild card for us. Well, I think that's the, the Liverpool player. Yeah, some even some that say Cavalio could be a quality player. Yeah, I will. I will. Casey, Kane's son are going to be top scorers. They did do very well last season. They'll do. They did very well last season. I mean, it... it's going to be a great. It's going to be a great goal scoring. Yes, challenge yes. or run. Say, I mean, I mean, Halle, like Nunes, Salah, um, Werner. We're putting, we're putting, we're putting Nunes. Really. <laughs> you said Werner. <laughs> Shout out to boy Alps, but I have a scholarship on Haaland's game. Stop looking at Haaland on the ball. He is generational off the ball, world-class positioning, and Pep knows that. As I said again, we shall be looking. We should be looking because, bro, based on the amount of hype that this guy has received, we'll be looking at it. So, guys, he's like, well, what, he's like what six five? That's in, like that's yeah, that's six in, three, six four. Well, that's insane. Man. So, guys, look, man. Shout out to your boy Ricardo. Shout out to your boy Vaso. Uh, so, guys, we're going to be back on Sunday because Saturday, two huge games. Obviously, Ban Man City and El Clasico as well. Um, so I have to be viewing that and then we'll be back on Sunday to review all those beautiful things, man. So guys, peace out, stay true, stay real, and I'll see you guys on Sunday as an, as I always say, Eden Hazard.
come home to Chelsea and we can get you back to where you belong. Chelsea is... Maybe that was the big signing I was talking about. Hazard.